Hello, everyone, and welcome to the long-awaited, delayed episode three of Game Session. I'm your host, Jose, or the Seth Rokage. And just at the top, I want to go to remind everyone that's watching to like, comment, subscribe, and all the socials, whether that's YouTube, Twitter, and you're already here on Twitch. Everyone's uh, ads, at least for Twitter, are on screen, so feel free to follow everyone on there. And today is actually a very, very special day because we are joined by our guest, Blaine. How are you doing, Blaine? Who's that? She sounds like kind of a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing we will, well, Jose. We, we will find out. And uh, we are also joined by the regular co-host, Sarah, Corey, Hello. and Mesa, who, who Hello. whose camera has died once again. I just, we're, we're just going to move on. You know, <laughs> I haven't had the time to put to, to fix it because I like I'm not I'm not giving it to Sony for two hundred and fifty dollars. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this myself. It sucks. So just generally, how's how's everyone doing today? I know I got my flu shot yesterday, so my my arm's sore. It's hating Ow. me. It's hot. <laughs> yeah, it it's hot. I'm melting. Well, we're all in California. Blaine, you're over in New York, right? Yes, it is pretty moderate and temperate, but it was sunny today, so I was able to dry some laundry. I would be very happy to take a moderate piece of weather. Mm-hmm. Now, when it you was say like 93 here. Now, so. when you say you were able to dry some laundry, you mean hang them on a clothesline, not in a dryer. No, well, yeah, but I mean, like, I have some lawn chairs in the back, and this was a big old, like, Eh, I don't know what you call it, like not a comforter, but the thing that goes o- under that, but over the sheet or whatever. Mm-hmm. If those if those chairs get sleepy, they'll be yawn chairs. No, I hate you. I, hate you. I, hate you. <laughs> I no. support. I support okay. this. I am here for this. Blaine, don't, don't, don't egg him on. Don't egg him on. If I was better at that, I would be making the puns nonstop. Oh no. All right. Nor- normally, um, we would go and start our shows with a guest by jumping into what they've been up to gaming wise. But I am actually incredibly fucking curious, Corey. I need you to tell me about oh, your, about your Yakuza <laughs> Zero experience. Okay, I need so, to know. <laughs> so, so I've been dying those, to hear this for two weeks. So for the rest, so for the rest of you who don't know exactly, and those those of you who are watching, uh, Seth. Or, Jose uh, basically gave me a um, a recommendation, as well as everyone else, uh, to play the Yakuza series. Um, and I had never played it, never touched it, never even appealed to me in any way, shape, or form. Um, until recently, I found out that Yakuza 0 and the series was on uh, Xbox Game Pass. Um, so I started playing Yakuza 0. And um, I... I I don't want to say I absolutely love it because I haven't finished the game yet, but I, I am like a little bit of the ways through the story and I'm starting to understand why everyone calls it a very serious uh, Japanese crime game. <laughs> it is very serious. Um, <laughs> yes. Very serious. Gotcha. Great. <laughs> and uh, um, I think my favorite part of the of the game, just in general, of, of uh, the side missions, if anything, first of all, Disco dancing is hard as shit, and I don't like it. Um, <laughs> oh, you're going to love Yakuza 5, then. <laughs> um, my favorite, I think, because it's more rhythm-based, like, well, okay, so disco dancing is rhythm-based, but, like, it's a different sty- type of rhythm, uh, is, is karaoke. Karaoke I can do. That's fine. That's just mashing buttons. But, like, <laughs> but like as far as the fighting mechanics and everything, that I love the different fighting styles that you can do. Um, I love how you can just randomly get into brawls with people on the street. Um, and then there's this big hunkin' dude who will come and take all of your money. And he's extremely hard to beat. And I hate him. <laughs> I just <laughs> so love I that. To- <laughs> I just love the idea of not being able to walk two blocks with just some random dude wanting to pick a fight with you. It's okay, yeah, but like, true. Corey, Multiple I need to know. Also. Yeah. So I've seen gameplay of it. Would you like compare those random encounters to like? It's gonna sound really nuts, but almost to like random Pokemon battles when you're like running through the grass, or like how un- not really annoying, but like how often do those? random encounters happen like is it is it every couple of steps is it every couple of minutes no i'd say i'd say it's not like pokemon in the sense that oh like 
freaking I can't get through this cave without encountering a Zubat, like that kind of bullshit. Yeah, you, um, you can kind of see them down the streets, and there's like other yeah. items you can equip to like increase and, or decrease their frequency. Well, and if you okay. look at if you look at your mini map, there's also like there's red markers that oh, there's some enemies that might pick a fight with you over here as okay. you get as you get closer, and then you can you, honestly sometimes you can easily run away from them. Okay. So what what, yeah. what do you think about the overall story and the side quests? So the overall story is very interesting. It it you know it starts out as like this, you know, who done it type of ordeal because you know your main character gets framed for a murder he didn't commit, and you're you're out there basically trying to solve you know who murdered this guy but also like a bigger a bigger overarching story of all of these mob uh mob families trying to buy out buy up the and and take up this um empty lot in uh in tokyo and the reason that's such a big deal is because every sing every single corner every single lot in that town is so stacked and crammed together with businesses so it's very rare for there to be an empty lot so i i really enjoy it i honestly um it's very it's very thick with substance as far as like um character you know character development and, and uh and storytelling it's very rich in storytelling the side stories are really interesting too because i love the whole dynamic between um you know the clearly american uh fighting trainer who's like wanting to, wanting you to be uh, a world class fighter but you're just like not having any of it but he's still willing to like teach you fighting moves and stuff um, I'm, I'm trying to remember like what some of the wackier stuff is in Zero because uh, there's definitely a lot in oh, 5 oh, but... oh I do have a story then so I actually did do a side quest randomly where I literally sat down with this like strange I want to call him a rock band and, and it was like these three guys, and they were all dressed like greasers, like '60s greasers. Oh, I, I remember this one. I know and exactly what you're about. <laughs> yeah, and I, I literally, the, you sit down as your main character, who's this, you know, hard ass yakuza, you know, beat 'em up type, and he's teaching them how to address their fans, <laughs> and how to put on a proper rock show. And I'm like, what is this game? Like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> I, I really want you to play Yakuza 2. There, there's one uh, side quest in particular that doesn't uh, baby around. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, I don't want to go any further into it, but I, I think I think you'll like it. <laughs> Blaine knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I haven't played it, and I know what you're talking about. Uh, well, I started it. Like, literally started it. So yeah, what else have you been uh, up so to? far I'm enjoying it. It's a good ride. Uh, I play it every so often. Uh, lately, I've just been taking a break from it because I've been playing other stuff. But yeah, what, what else have you been playing? I have been obsessively playing Hades. Um, I lost an entire day to that game, and it because I love. First of all, I love uh, super giant games. Um, they are phenomenal. I haven't played Pyre, but it's on my list to go back to. Please um, play Pyre. Yeah. It's, it's really good. But I played, I played, I discovered them when they first made Bastion, and I and mm -hmm. uh, and I fell in love with that game, and the music and everything was just brilliant. Uh, and then they came out with Transistor, and again, it was a freaking hit out of the park. Um, and then Can I just I sort of something really quick. Go ahead. Something because I recently they the uh, the port of Bastion on the eShop went on sale I think like two weeks ago or something so I picked it up because I'm like why not it's a fun game and I haven't played it in a while I never because I played it originally on my 360 on a much smaller TV and not an HD TV I never realized that all of the player models are like CG 3D models on a 2D background I always thought mm -hmm. that they were like a heavy 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 layered um, 2D sprite. So that's Surprising? my fucking mind. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. it's cheaper that way versus doing 2D animation, even if it's pixels. Oh, no, mm -hmm. for sure. But the fact that it was so detailed on, like, a slower resolution at the time, like, I would have never expected that that was actually... And now on, like, a big 4K TV, I can definitely see that it's a CG model. It still looks great. But, like, it's just, like, it. it's, like, magic to me. Oh, yeah. And that's typically that's typically what I see what I see Supergiant Games doing is they have these very well crafted, almost like artistic painted backgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. And they, and 
obviously their camera work and their and their use of angles is is almost magical. Um, but I I, I uh, I've been really deep into that game, and I literally have gotten to the like I think is the final boss, which is I'm not gonna for anyone who hasn't played it yet, I'm not gonna spoil it. But um, I've gotten to like the final boss twice, and I've died both times. And it sucks because when you die in that game, you go all the way back to the beginning, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Is it true that Hades has big horny energy? Uh, he has he has daddy energy for sure. <laughs> uh, he's just pissed off all the time because like who wouldn't be pissed off having to judge and condemn all of the dead souls of the world for all eternity? Like, that's a would shit you, job. <laughs> would you say the experience seems a little hellish? No! I'll, Thank I'll you, leave. Blaine. I'll leave, if that's what you want. I'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. That was a large reach, because hell and Hades are not exactly the same thing. But yeah. I'm Still, so glad Hades, Jose Hades appreciated is pretty it. hellish. I, I appreciate you, Blaine. Hellish. Yeah. So and honestly, Blaine, I'm I'm learning because of this game. I'm actually learning a lot more about um, about Greek mythology that I didn't know before. I had no idea Nyx, uh, the goddess of night, existed. I had no idea uh, the 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 um, primordial being of chaos was a thing. Like, there's there's so much just in general about Greek mythology that they are injecting into this game that I had no idea existed. So that's super neat. Does does mm -hmm. I feel it? Um, is there a character that just screams Zeus very angrily? No, but Zeus is Zeus is in it. <laughs> <laughs> like all beat of up Zeus. No, so that's the thing is like Hades. Uh, so when you're when you're in, you're playing as Zagreus, the the son of Hades, and I love um, Zagreus so much. Yeah. <laughs> He's such a good boy. <laughs> yes, yes, um, he is a good boy. Uh, but he, he he basically is trying to escape. Uh, you know the 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 house of Hades, the 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 dwellings of Hell, and he's he's trying to make it up to the surface. And obviously, the Olympians, the gods of Olympia, uh, being his family, technically by blood, uh, are helping him out by sending him uh, gifts that they can bestow upon him uh, to make you stronger or faster, or whatever it is, so you can get through the the realms of of uh, Hell. Okay. Blaine, what what have you been up to gaming wise? Aside from Among oh. Us, we we can totally talk about Among Us. I don't think we've talked. I think we talked about it a little bit on one of our episodes. Oh, Among Us! What is what is there to say? That um, you're a I mastermind think, and you're great at lying. I, well, that that and I liked your your post. I think in one of the discords or in that was just like it's teaching a whole new generation of kids how to gaslight their friends. <laughs> <laughs> Those relationships are going to be fucked. Uh, just call, oh, yeah. just call Blaine purple from now on. <laughs> well, see that doesn't work though, because Sarah also goes purple, so we have to kind of. Yeah, it's out. Oh, okay. I, we're we're we are both purple. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to stay green. Mask, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I love this purple Deadpool mask, but um, what am I playing other than Among Us? I actually wrote this down. Uh, so the big one has been I've just been consistently playing Animal Crossing since the October update dropped. Do you, do I you am... have your pumpkin patch? Like, is it fully full? Oh, I have my pumpkin patch. <laughs> okay. In fact, I may even have a picture of my pumpkin patch. Oh, on the camera. whip it out. But, um, whip out the picture. If it gets destroyed, so. you might have to patch it up. Exactly. God, I will leave too. If so this help me, continues. Jose. I will take this glass <laughs> mug and I will shove it in your face through the camera. <laughs> There will be shards of glass in your head. Ouch. <laughs> I just wanted the dentist today, too. Damn. Hmm, I might not have a picture of it, but anyway. Um, yeah, no, I have a pumpkin patch. I actually have two, because I replaced a, a bunch of bushes on one other part of my island. Mm -hmm. I am driven to get all of the spooky recipe crafting recipes, because Dude, the whole set is just so fantastic. Same. <laughs> same. This is something we can definitely talk about, because I, I, I also... Ooh, have been playing Animal Crossing uh, since the uh, ha the Halloween update dropped, and um, I I just want all of the spooky recipes, and I I literally have gone around my my island, and once I made my pumpkin patch, I was like, okay, what else what else could I do to make it more, you know, tis the season of spooky time, so I like literally plucked out all these flowers that I had in my entrance, and I 
I just, I just did a whole thing. I renovated a lot. Like, I just did a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been changing things. I had this, uh, one of the wooden fences around, like, the, let's call it the town square. Mm -hmm. And I kept the flowers there because they're purple and I'm trying to fill it up. But, like, I replaced it with the spooky fencing. And mm -hmm. then in the front, instead of the two uh, street lights I had, I actually put two of the green customized uh, standing lanterns. So it's got that whole balance going on. Um, I already replaced all the bushes for the fall of the hibiscus. I made like, I originally was trying to do like an open air, uh, I called it the free market, but I mm -hmm. found out that when you have people over it, and if you stand in front of a stall <clears throat> item with items on it, it won't tell you the name unless you pick it up. So I scrapped that idea and I turned it into a pumpkin patch with scarecrows, fake corn, uh, the yellow hyacinth flowers, and uh, some other things I'm trying to put together. Nice. I also, oh, if, if any, woods. if if any of you want to come to my island, I actually have a, I made up a game with jack o' lanterns. It's a scavenger hunt, uh, and Ooh. a timer. So you have to find all five of the jack, not the not like the tall ones or anything, not the ones with bales of hay. Just a regular single jack o' lantern. You have to find five jack o' lanterns without with, within three minutes on my island, and you get a prize. Ooh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's fun as hell. That yeah. sounds really cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually really curious because I haven't touched it. I just kind of barely got around to watching um, Giant Bomb's quick look on it. But uh, Blaine, you and Sarah have been playing a little bit of Genshin Impact, right? No, I actually yes. haven't been. Oh, okay. Blaine. Well, I, I, yeah. Blaine, oh, I have. I have not. <laughs> I have, actually. Corey has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> damn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually didn't mention it. I kind of silently have been playing it uh, for a few yeah. days now. Are you trying to like hide your weebness? <laughs> I wouldn't say hiding weakness. I'm, if I make make an assumption, Corey, it's more the fact that how do I put this? Because um, I I don't I might be borderline stealing what someone else said when I say this, but like it's a really really fun free game with some of the most predatory monetization I've ever seen. Like, this is so true. Like it's not, and it's not even the model that's predatory. It's just the way everything is. Like, does it just kind of toss in your face? Like, hey, you should buy this not now. Even yes and no, because it's not even like they tell you to go buy stuff. They tell you at one point when you unlock that option, they're like, oh yeah, go to the wish menu, go to the shop. But really, it's like just the fact that you can spend money so quickly and so easily on gotcha shit. Yeah. So, like. Like, I get, you get, like, a bunch of free wishes, which is what... The, the, the wish is the currency to get things, and there's two. There's the one... we we'll call them A and B. A is, like, your general roulette wish, and then your novice, like, starter wishes, which you only get 20 of. Mm -hmm. and then you have the B, which is, like, your specific limited-time event one. So, like, mm -hmm. if you want one of these characters, you have a better chance getting it in this selection, but you have to use this specific wish to do it. Mm-hmm. And oh, speaking of which, uh, I was, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this means anything, but I got, I was lucky enough when I did my, when I spent my wishes, my free wishes, I, uh, I got that, s the special, um, fire spear girl who has like a bear, a fire bear as her companion. Yeah. It's like a Tanuki or something. It's adorable. Mm -hmm, it's adorable. I was happy about getting her. I was like, yes. <laughs> See, cause I'm like, I'm just, every time I end up actually cashing those in, I'm just like, all right, how many twinks did I get? Or, ooh, <laughs> yay, new twink! Yeah. I've, gotten, I've gotten at least three. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So you've been trying to download PT also? Did you originally have it? Well, this is the thing. I was trying to download PT. It was not successful because I did the thing where I put it in my library before I had a PS4 so that I hopefully I could re-download it. This is also before people realized that, that wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Huh. Sorry, beard hair getting in my mouth under here. But <laughs> um, I found a workaround of like, you know, oh, use this proxy on your laptop and then be on the same network as your PS4, yada yada. Tried that, I got all the way to the end with everything working, and then it just doesn't want to download every time. So I was, just, I, I was like going from, yeah, I'm going to play PT, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, lucky not. enough that I did the yeah. um, whatever the system transfer was, so I still have it on my Pro. There you go. God, jealous. I am lucky. Oh, uh, what is Mario Picross? I Mario... Th this totally f went past my radar. Yeah, no problem. Mario Picross was is the I think it's a Super Famicom game that came out on the Switch uh, Super Nintendo thingy. 
fucking I saw uh, Finn from SDGC talking about it, so I was like, okay, let me check this out because I like Picross if it's what I remember and I like puzzle games. That has been that kept me up to like four or five a.m. one of those nights, like after we played Among Us, because I just couldn't stop doing the puzzles. It's very like if you have that like that that OCD or or obsessive thing of like of like. Uh, to preface, I mean literally like OCD, not like making light of it. Like of you need to check off all the boxes, make all these things do this, and it just feels good in your brain. Mm -hmm. Cross is great for that because it's all about okay, select all the right boxes and then X out the ones that you don't want to use. Absolutely. Is, is it? Is there anything special about it? Is it just kind of like a Mario skin slapped on it? Um, it's it's Mario character like Mario's on the menu and in the backgrounds there's like Yoshi and Wario and other things. But the actual puzzles themselves, I can't really parse because the game is not translated at all. Oh, all okay. In, hard in Japanese. So like yeah. like the first level was like Japanese characters like like uh, I think I think uh, Kana like Katakana. I'm not sure. Uh, um, Katakana would be for. Uh, using like uh, English words, so I th maybe. Okay, maybe or that or maybe it was kanji, but either way, it was like Japanese letters, and then like then there were pictures, and some of them like once you complete it, they like animated a little bit, and it's just a fun little puzzle game. Um, one thing I know that um, Sarah would like me to probably talk about is the fact that uh, she has success. Well, I she didn't get me into Vocaloid. My boyfriend got me into Vocaloid. She knows where this is going. My boyfriend got me into Vocaloid a while ago, and um, I've also been looking, to tr been trying to get more and more into it, like, recently. And um, Sarah told me, like, well, you can download the free version of Project Diva on PS4. And so I did, and it only has two songs, but I had so much fun that when I'm able to, I definitely want to get the rest of the songs, because it is a hell fun yeah, ass Hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah, hell <laughs> yeah. Y'all, y'all can't see it, but that entire like first like thing on my collectible tower is just many, many Mikus. Like I love Vocaloid, I love Project Diva, I love Hatsune Miku, and I'm so glad that Blade is getting into it. Oh yeah, and like, so you know, like I've been, I've been playing that. I've been playing the Kingdom Hearts uh, Melody of Memory demo. Um, weirdly difficult, not bad. I just don't know if it's my thing. Um, but it's interesting mm. as hell. And I actually do want to get the PS4 version at some point. Sarah, um, have you been playing that at all? Yeah, so I, I cheated, and I have a Japanese eShop account. So on Tuesday, I downloaded the demo off the Japanese eShop on the Switch, and I played it. It's definitely not easy, even on, like... She's the way better at it than me, just so you know. <laughs> it's not <laughs> easy. Like, I will be the first person, like, playing. It is not an easy um, rhythm game. I would say that this is probably the most, like, for the fans Kingdom Hearts game that I've seen. Just because, like, the music isn't easy unless you've memorized the beat. Unless you've, like, memorized how, like, the Alice in Wonderland battle theme goes. Right. Or, like, how, uh, how, uh, um, ah, fuck, can't the name of it. But it's, like, basically if you memorize how the, how the themes are, you can hit the notes much easier. It's definitely one of those things where if you shove someone who's never played a Kingdom uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts game and they start playing one of the battles and they can't get the beat, I can see them getting frus frustrated. Okay. Yeah, and... But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It is 100% recommend it. Uh, this, this game is canon if people didn't know. So if you played Kingdom Hearts 3 and you want to know what happens after this, you want to pick this up. Because <laughs> this is technically Kingdom Hearts 3.5. So I really need to give... Do. I need to give the three of you, like, your own podcast specifically for Kingdom Hearts <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, and I can be in the non-Kingdom Hearts podcast. Yeah. I just wanted to mention really quick something I mentioned before the uh, the, the start of this podcast today. Uh, is that I, I purposely am not playing the demo because I told Sarah that I just want a fresh... Especially when it comes to Kingdom Hearts games, just in general, it's Hell just yeah. my, it's my personal It's my personal opinion that I, I just want to start things fresh. Uh from the get-go i i don't want to i don't want any sneak peek or anything like that of like I, i've watched the trailers but i i mm -hmm. don't want to play it or anything mm -hmm. until it's it's in my hands um i have a history with rhythm games i've played ddr my, my whole childhood i played guitar hero i played uh freaking uh what's that what's that rhythm game on uh uh, uh ono or oh yeah uno, uno. Oh, not oh, so. not uno oh, so. Not Uno. Osu. <laughs> Thank you. Osu. I played yeah, Osu no like crazy. 
Osu um, and Elite Agents are some of the best rhythm games ever made. Yeah, I tried going back to Osu. It's harder than I remember. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and also, if anybody actually ever played this, this is super niche, but, like, for the PlayStation 2, there was a game that was a direct sequel to Nightmare Before Christmas, and it was a, a action RPG game called Oogie's Revenge, and it was also a rhythm game on the boss is that, battles. Is that the one where huh. Jack has the weird green thing coming on? He has a goo, it's a goo whip. It's a goo whip. Yeah, I never played that, but I always wanted to. It is a fantastic game. I have it for PS2, and I'm so happy that I have it because I can play it again. But, uh, yeah, so I, th I feel like I'm going to be ready for, for this Kingdom Hearts game. Yeah, so. the demo is, th like I said, I don't know if Blaine got the demo for the same reason, but I got the demo basically because I wanted to see how the, how the like, rhythm game part of it works because yeah, I was same, definitely, honestly. like... Because, like, I, I saw a trailer and I'm like, oh, this looks really cool, a Kingdom Hearts rhythm game. Hell yeah, but how the fuck does it work? So, honestly, I would have never downloaded the demo if I didn't know how it works. So, that's partially why I got it. And I just ended up being like, oh, my God, this is a lot of fun, but hard to master. So, uh, I'm going to be excited to see when it finally comes out, Corey, what you think of it. Because it took me one or two songs to finally, like, get it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I understand it. I now, like I said, it took it, me, like... But I'm having well, fun. <laughs> yeah, it took, it took me one or two. So I'm excited I'm to play. Excited. I'll, I'll I'll definitely let you know how it goes. My first my first trial, um, when it comes out. So I've just been on like a rhythm game binge lately because <laughs> I was doing those. I bought the remaster of Patapon finally, which is just hit drums, make little and uh, little guys with eyeballs run across and kill other little guys with eyeballs. It's very cute. <laughs> I'm actually uh, pretty curious. How's uh, how's Crash Four going for you? Because I I, I, I I super want to play it, especially I'm curious they, about this too. They are finally showing love for my boy Dingo Dial. I would always play Dingo Dial and CTR back on PS One, and it's it's nice to see some love for the guy coming along. See, but, okay, uh, that's the whole thing. I have only played before this. I played Crash Bandicoot Three Warped, and that's about it. Because I was on vacation and they had a PS One in their hotel room, and I ended up buying two games: Crash Bandicoot Three Warped and The Fifth Element. Take nice. a guess which one of those nice. games I actually kept and didn't return. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I mean, Warped was hard, and I didn't quite get it, but I still loved it. I never, I think I only got up to, like, the second world or something. Um, Crash 4 is, it is amazing. Like, like, I don't know how to, I never expected to get, like, a, a game that embodies everything about, like, what I remember about Crash as well as it doesn't feel archaic and like it's just punishing you nonstop. Mm -hmm. um, I think the consensus so far has just kind of been that like it's, it's not just like a great addition of the series it's actually probably <laughs> on par if not even a little bit better than the original trilogy and that yeah. the um, the modern mode just takes lives out completely so it's just like yeah. It, it, there's, yeah. there's no reason to have that in games nowadays just, just get rid of it no, for real, and like, and I mean, number one, like, I, I play it with the lives mode just because that's what I'm used to, and mm -hmm. it's not difficult to get lives, especially if you're crazy like I am, and I end up going back because I want to get, like, all the gems if I can, and then give up after four hours, but like, <laughs> you, you know, like, I'm literally sitting on, I think, like, 80-something lives or something, and, and I'm not even up to, like, I'm not even past the third world. And there's just so much cool stuff to do. Like, you, you can play as Coco and Crash. You have all the skins you unlock. You go back and get all the crates. You find the flashback tapes that let you go into those, like, these prequel stages that are just a straight, like, this is a visual uh, side-scrolling puzzle. Figure out how to bust up all the boxes and make it to the other side. You got um, the alternate timeline stuff where, you, like you said, you control people like Dingo Dial or, oh, people like Dingo Dial or uh, Tawana Bandicoot and these other characters. And you can see, like, you get a window into what they're doing while Crash and Coco are going through shit, but also, like, in AUs of that specific instance. It's it's cool. It is really cool. I don't feel like I'm being punished. Even if I'm being losing the level, like, over and over and over and over again. That's what time really trials like are I'm for. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like with the removal of lives, it just allows you to experiment and just try weird shit without having to worry about, like, well, I can't do it too much, otherwise I'm fucked. Oh, yeah, and there's no death counter. Because that's the thing, it's like, there's a death counter for every level, so if you die more than three times, that's one gem you don't get. But, like, 
that's time trial mode, there's no death counter. It's literally, you can use that to, like you said, practice, see how quickly you can get through the level and without any damage and other things. And and then, then you can apply that to other things afterwards. Right. Mesa, what, what have you been up to? Um, unfortunately, not as much as I would uh, like. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was still doing the usual things, you know, still practicing in Street Fighter Five, getting a little better every day. Um, um, I still never took I, you up on your offer to uh, train <laughs> me. You, you probably wipe the floor with me, but yeah. The, 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 the mm. door's always open. Together. The door's I'd always play, open. I'm just not good. <laughs> hey, we, if hey, we all can download Fight Kid, we can play Third Strike. Um, uh, oh, I, one of the things I have been playing this entire week has been uh, Risk of Rain 2. Okay. See, Risk How of is Rain it? 2 is, um, you know, it's just a, like this, like, um, it's a multiplayer game online. You go through a um, randomly selected bunch of levels as you, um, you know, wipe out enemies, get experience, get items build up to eventually fight the final boss at the end you know you have different runs and different characters what i've been playing has been like modded versions oh what kind and of mods? so some i've been playing with this goku and vegeta mod <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the most one of the most well-made like dragon ball mods i've ever seen go on it, it, <laughs> like like, literally, Vegeta, uh, as Vegeta, right? Um, there's a point in time where you can choose to become Majin Vegeta. And oh, then, later on, break away from the mind control and become even stronger. It's... It's... Uh, the, the attention to detail is is absurd. This sounds like an amazing mod. Just wanna, it, just wanna it, put that out there. I, pre- <laughs> I, th- I, think, I think it is. Like, there, and there's... The mod scene for, for the game is very good. Very, like, rich. Like, there's, like, you can... All these different characters. You can play a Sora. Like, it's it's incredible what people have been able to do with this game. Is it just yeah. infinitely better by the fact it has Dragon Ball Z characters in it? I mean, that's what I'm, <laughs> that's the most <laughs> I've, I've had this game for like a year, and it's the most I've played it. So yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, is there a mod where you can play as Rain from Mortal Kombat? Um, I would no. assume so. That's not that's not a pun, because it's literally <laughs> just the same word. I'm just asking because that would I, it would drive me nuts if that wasn't a thing somehow. No, modding communities are. If they were a leader of a country, would they reign over their citizens? Stop. Set up. <laughs> that would be a pun, yeah. I set him up. Jose yep. knocks him down. Thank you, Blaine. Stop. Good part. <laughs> You've been uh, playing anything on this podcast again. You're all gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> John's never gonna want to come on here now. <laughs> at the end, at the end of this, you're just gonna see me pick up a, a can of gasoline and light myself on fire. That's no, Corey, no. <laughs> don't do that, Corey. I know, I know, you guys can't see my camera, but I've been uh, dabbling in some puns for John. Actually, you, you're gonna see what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Mesa, were you done only because I didn't want to interrupt you if you weren't? Yeah, I was going to say, the only other thing I've done is I've touched the uh, the Pikmin 3 demo. Oh, um, same! I never, yeah, I, I, I was playing on Pro Controller since, you know, Pikmin 3, I, I played, when I had a Wii U, I played it with, um, with the, um, with the Wii Remote Nunta because that's just as better. Um, so yeah, trying it out with the Pro Controller, it's actually surprising. It takes a minute to get used to, but like, once you get it, you can actually quite, you can move quite a bit with it. Um, um, but, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much been my week at weeks, I guess, at this point. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, not much, not much to say this time around. Okay, S- Sarah, what, what have you been up to? Uh, so, since we're like two weeks behind, uh, last week on Tuesday, mostly because people wouldn't shut up about it, I ended up buying uh, B- uh, B- Baldur's Gate 3 off of Early Access. Uh, just because, like, there's so many people that we share, uh, Discord with who are, like, freaking out about it, and I was just like, you know what, I want something different to play, so I said, why the hell not, I gave it a shot, I played around two and a half, three hours of it, oh my god, it's very buggy, apparently they- (laughs) Yeah, it's it's very alpha. Oh boy, it, uh, there's some stuff that happened in my game, and I already had me starting it, 
Apparently I had the wrong C++ downloaded to play Oops. it, and my game just wouldn't start, and I couldn't find any reason of why. So I became, like, Hacker Man for, like, an hour of trying to figure out, trying to, like, get in, get into the game's code and files, trying to figure out just what the hell it wasn't working. Your, uh, uh, your write-up on your blog was pretty funny, just documenting everything you. that happened. I think yeah, you had, like, a dude I, just, like, fly up in the air that you couldn't loot. Legitimately. Like, I don't know if you know how when games are broken and, like, people, like, skyrocket into the stratosphere and their, like, polygons are freaking out, so they, like, elongate as they fly. That happened, like, twice. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't even loot somebody. I was so mad because I like needed potions, and I couldn't they loot just, people. <laughs> they ended up going back to their home planet. Yeah, basically. Like I was just like, I need potions. Where are you going? As I just like flew off, and like tentacles were like freaking out, and demon wings were freaking out. Just uh, but throw in, throw in sh the song "Shooting Stars" there, and then yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> meme. and it's like it sucks because so I was enjoying what I was playing of it because let me just say this isn't my type of game. If for, for people who don't know, Baldur's Gate is a turn-based or real-time strategy game. Baldur's Gate 3, you can actually play either or. There's like a turn-based button that you can press and you can play it as a turn-based game. You can do it on the fly. So I never played games like this. The only reason I actually played it was because again, people wouldn't shut up. And two, I found out that you could romance people in it. And I was like, damn, you have me sold. So I bought it, booted it up, played like three hours, uh, wrote a really funny blog post about my three hours because I had some really terrible dice rolls that fucked me up and I can't for reference, have you played uh, many CRPGs beforehand? No. <laughs> okay, so cause I, I'm they I'm a little exactly my time. Yeah, I'm slightly hesitant to jump into Baldur's Gate, you know, especially just since it's early access. If anything, I'll just wait. But I played that studio's um, previous two games, mm -hmm. Divinity One and Two, and it's a rough learning curve so, if you're not into crpgs but i put like a hundred hours into both i gave them a fair shake yeah so from what i've talked to people uh i played like 10 hours of divinity 2 but i kind of met a wall and i couldn't progress and that kind of pissed me off so i stopped playing but from what people told me Baldur's gate is like divinity 2 light because it was easy for me to get into oh, that's i don't surprising. normally play those games so I was able to get in and be like, okay, I understand what's going on. It's like you're playing a game of D and uh, of a D and D. You can either play it co-op or by yourself. I still have to try it co-op. Um, but so the crazy thing that's happened is every time I start to think about wanting to play Baldur's Gate three, I start thinking about I want to play Dragon Age Inquisition more. <laughs> like you know, my for brain just starts going to Dragon Age, not thinking Baldur's Gate. And I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know if it's... I think it's because, so, like I said, in Baldur's Gate 3, you can romance some of your kin companions, but because it's early access, not all of the romance options have been added yet. So, of course, I found out the one character I wanted to romance. You can't yet. So for what I'm it's worth... Like, hmm? I was going to say, for what it's worth, uh, Divinity 2 has the best romance option because you can uh, bone a skeleton. Nice. Boo. Boo. But, Does the skeleton have but skeleton titties. So, that will be a deal breaker. No, no, but you can have a skeleton of fun. So, um, titties. Oh my god. I don't know if <laughs> all of you have played wild, any. They make wild ads. I I don't know if if any people have played any of the Dragon Age games or basically any Bioware RPG, basically. But you know, there's like I'm I, I'm sure you all know. Yes, yes, played. I'm no, sure I'm you all know. It. Yeah, I'm sure you all know, you can tell what options characters are going to like and dislike by just talking to them. And Baldur's Gate kind of does that. Like, you can go into a camp at any point, which is awesome, by the way. I love this feature. You can go into a camp at any point to fully heal and talk to your party. And you can talk to your party and be like, oh, what do you guys like? Tell me about your backstory. And it allows you to figure out what characters like and dislike. But there's been multiple options that I've chosen that everybody has disliked. <laughs> I <laughs> and no one played. has liked. I haven't huh? played this. I mean, because also I don't think my computer can handle it. But, yeah. Um, I heard someone talking about this the other day and saying how, like, apparently, this is based on their word. Apparently, for this early access build as of right now, they wanted because it, people always gravitate towards like the nicer, either like. Either, either characters that are more like in the middle or like towards good. They usually tend to grab mm -hmm. towards those kind of characters. Never really to like the monsters, assholes, and villains and stuff yeah. like that. 
I heard a thing that apparently they've tried, they filled this with those kinds of characters that almost nobody goes for, specifically because they wanted to be able to test it more and get people's reactions to that. So yeah, so... that might be why you're getting those reactions, because you're going with like, well, this is how I feel in earnest, and they're all like, you're not eating babies? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well, so, okay, I'll just say really, really quick before I go into what else I'm playing, because I'm actually playing a lot. I'm trying to romance a mage named Gale, uh, and when you talk to Gale, he's like this high and mighty, like, oh, I enjoy having wine at night, cuddling up with, with my cat and with a good book. And I'm like, okay... Gail's probably all for helping people. I mean, you don't know, but I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, Gail's probably all for helping people. He's like, all for me doing things that- He sounds like violent. a wine mom, and I love it. He is. <laughs> Gail's 100% a wine mom. But so I get to the spot where one of my other party members has been caught in a trap, and there's two tieflings- Tiflings? I don't know how to pronounce that. I who are like, oh, You're good. we should leave her. We, we should leave her, and we shouldn't save her, because she's going to kill us. And you can either attempt to fight them, or you can attempt to talk them out, but it all but it all relies on dice rolls. So my first attempt, my dice roll attempt to talk to them fails. And my last resort is to fight them. And you I'm thinking, they're kind of being jackasses. My party's here to fight them. No, everybody hated it. <laughs> yeah, my, my first resort in, in these kinds of, kinds of games specifically is uh, press that F5 key. Quick save is your friend. Yeah, it's. I didn't think to do that, so I had to restart from the beginning of the chapter and save go back. Save is very important. But Please I got me. a good dice roll and talked them into leaving, so I could save my party member. And some people fucking hated that. And I'm like, there's no like pleasing you people. <laughs> you, you might actually like um fuck what's the name uh, Disco Elysium. There's no combat. It's all just I actually. Uh, I actually started playing that. It, it's I really good. Like, but it's like, it made me so mad because the one thing I like about Dragon Age, and I'm going back to Dragon Age again, is that when you talk to characters, you can understand what they like and dislike. So if you want to get them to like you better, you pick the options that you know that, that they're going to approve of. This game gives you no real con context. And that's really hard for me to like get into these characters, even though I want to bone the hell out of Gale. It's like, how the fuck do I get them to like me? <laughs> Like, what options do you like? What options don't you like? And right before my gameplay ended, like, right before my, like, session ended, I talked these two characters out of fighting one another because we just had a big battle. And I'm like, cool, I was the diplomatic one. And again, like, three people hated that. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it just was like, what the fuck? And again, now it's making me want to play Dragon Age in, in, in Inquisition, so I'm probably going to re-download Dragon Age sometime this week. Sir, I think you're the only... I think you're the only one that's touched 13 Sentinels. Yeah, so I played around two hours of it. Two and a half, three hours. Again, oh. three hours of something. Is, um, is it cute? Is it cute anime people with a cute little uh, robot fighting fighting giant robots in a city? Hell no. These, these teenagers get into these yeah. robots and they're butt naked. <laughs> Sounds anime to me. It's weird. Yeah, it sounds real anime and real weird. It is. I've it's heard the, this. Uh, I've heard this game. It's the uh, the Vanillaware game, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is this Vanillaware game that's been in development for like years. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it. Let me just say off the bat, it's fucking beautiful. It's one of the prettiest games I've ever played ever. Like, just the art style is utterly gorgeous. I'm playing on like an HD TV and on a PlayStation Four Pro, so I'm guessing it's taking advantage of that. Um. It feels almost like a Vita game to me. It almost feels like an upscaled, up Vita game. Because, so, what what 13 Sentinels is, and, and I'm not going to talk about the story, because that's 100% spoiling it. You need to go into this game blind. Um, it's that. half visual novel, half tactical mech combat. And the way I, the reason I say it looks like a... It, it reminds me of, like, a Vita game is because the combat sections are these, like, full from, like, the sky down. You don't see the mechs. You rarely see the mechs. Um, you rarely see what you're actually fighting unless you're, It's like, like a city grid it. or something, right? Yes, kind of. Yeah, I think um, it's almost like... It, it almost feels like, uh, like, playing war on a table, like, Risk, where, like, you maybe... Well, you'll yes. see, like, a representation of what's fighting, but you don't actually see an animated, like... Yes, 100%. It's, like, anime Risk. It's, um... But the, uh, yeah. the one thing I like about the... Uh, just a heads up, though... So this game's tutorial is like three hours long. <laughs> yeah, I've I've heard people say like 
Yeah, it sounds like pretty anime to me. It, stream the first two hours because that's just the prologue tutorial. It thing, literally, and everything else yeah. Is spoilers. It's like two and a half, three hours is the tutorial bit. And from what I can tell, it's a very good mixture of the visual novel and the actual gameplay aspect of it. Because to unlock certain characters' paths, you need to A, hit a certain chapter in the visual novel, or B, you need to you need to finish a certain like combat mission. Yeah. So it's very interesting in, in how it combines the two. I will say though, as someone who has like glasses and has kind of messed up vision, it's hard to watch for like a long period of time, especially the combat. Because you I kinda need to squint to see where everything is. Mm. Like it's very tiny, which really sucks mm. for Do me. Do your glasses have the blue filter thing on them by yes. any chance? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So it's really hard for me to like, like I need to literally like kind of stand up and play because I need like close to my TV and like squint to what I'm seeing. But the, is that I just because like the text is small, or it's just like it kind of doesn't stand out against like the background? It doesn't. I mean, it kind of stands out against the background because it has like neon hue to the characters and what you're fighting. Right. But um, I, I just think it's the way that the game is set up because, like I said, this feels like a Vita game. This feels like at one point this was under development for the Vita. And they said, the oh god, the Vita's dying. Not an insult, though. No, 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 it's not. And I'm definitely not saying it as an insult. Yeah, I figured you were. Yeah, it's more like, I feel like they had this under development for the Vita at first. And then the Vita started dying, and they're like, we need to switch this, so they ported it to the PlayStation 5. The, like, to be fair, the Vita that. started dying before it came out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I mean, you're not Oh, Mesa, wrong. you still have That's mine. That's a sad thing. Yeah. So, like, to end like their and I want one. Sorry, you go on, Sarah. No, no, it's fine. I highly recommend trying it if you're a fan of visual novels that have gameplay to them, because this is exactly that. There is... The one thing I like about this game's uh, choices, though, is, um, is that the choices are never, like, life-changing, because you know how some games... Like, I know with my really bad anxiety, some, like, picking some choices really gets me super anxious. I haven't felt that so so far. Like every choice so far has been like, oh, this will come back later, but don't worry ab about it. It's like your own decisions on w w what you pick. Like, yeah, the story's gonna comment on it, but it's not like, oh, this is gonna, I, at least I don't think so. It's like, oh, this isn't gonna cause you to lose a character. Like you right. play as all the characters at, which there's like fucking 13 characters, by the way, this game's fucking huge. <laughs> Like, I've heard it's not, it's definitely, it's not like that Telltale style of, like, let's manufacture no. a bunch of very specific things. It's literally, like, things Do come you... up, but you don't, it's not like mm -hmm. you're replaying the same thing, just with a different character. It's once in a while you'll see different perspectives, but it's all still yeah. very unique in its own thing. Mm -hmm. To give to give a quick example, uh, it's like, the way that dialogue, or, or the way that choices work is, do you talk to this one person? Yes. Yes. Do you, do you click want to learn more or don't want to learn more? Which one do you click? That's how your path goes. Okay. And that unlocks more stories and picking certain paths actually unlocks different characters. I need to pick this so up. So if you want to play with every, everybody, you want to pick the right choices. Which, of course, thankfully, there are like guides out there. If you want to unlock every everybody, there are really, really great guides that explain what you have to do. But... It's basically one of those where I'm trying to go in blind as I can because there's some characters I super want want to play as, but there's some that I played in the tutorial where I'm like they're not really that interesting, so I don't really care. But yeah, it's interesting if that's your type of thing. I highly recommend picking it up. Just know that you're in it for the long haul because oh my god. Speaking of long haul, how's the uh, how's the pre patch going for you for a while up to Shadow? Oh, it's great. <laughs> oh, it's great. You you, you just really ran game. you just ran the freaking Arthas raid by yourself just to see if you could get that was it like point point one percent chance that you can get um the mount? Oh, I do that like five times weekly, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so the pre patch for World of Warcraft Shadowlands just dropped last Tuesday. Um, this is not the like big like oh here's the events leading up to the actual expansion. That's not what this is. Uh, I talked about it. Two weeks ago, but really quick, for those who don't know, Shadowlands was pushed back. There's no re release date, just the end of 2020. What they did, though, was they released the pre-patch to it, which includes the new leveling, which includes the level squish. So before the max was 120, it's now 50. So every 120 character got smushed down to level 50. 
Um, and they also added over 200 customization options. Every model has been bumped up a tiny bit. The customization options, you can actually have a character that looks like a person now. Like, they've added hmm. skin tones, hair, hair color, eye colors, um, ear length, tail length. Like, there is so much. It is absolutely crazy. They made it's an all... actual game. Yeah. Yeah. Yes! You can have, like, you, you can actually make a character, if you want to do this, you can make a character that looks like you. They also um they reworked a whole bunch of talents and skills and I believe at least oh, for the yeah. character at least for the classes I play warrior mage and um and death knights they added a whole bunch of um, abilities that you'd have to be like another uh, spec yeah so you, so you could just use them across the board they're not all necessarily mm -hmm. uh, useful because you're not necessarily spec in those things but mm -hmm. it's nice to have the option there at least yeah so they basically streamlined everything talent and ability wise they also the big thing is they changed the whole leveling system now so from 1 to 10, you go to an area called Exile's Breach, which is the new starting zone. It's basically a huge tutorial island. You learn how to equip stuff. You learn to fight really, really big bosses. You learn what quests to do. You learn how to play your class. Not like the right way, but like you learn how to play your class, no matter what class you are. Um, and, and the island ends with your first dungeon. So it's your first tutorial dungeon, basically. Right. Basically, if you haven't played WoW, now's the best time to. Oh, um, that sounds like because I remember playing WoW back in high school and not knowing what the fuck to do, just kind of running. Those it's completely through, different. And then like playing <laughs> four or five years ago or something, and still being like, I mean, this is fun, but I still, it's still not very intuitive. Yeah. yeah oh god, I th that's completely changed. Yeah, I think this it is going to be a great uh, jumping on point for newcomers, or just people that, you know, like playing that couldn't get into it previously, just because, um, so correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but after you do that tutorial island, which is levels 1 through 10, it yes. lets you choose either the vanilla WoW areas or the, one of the expansion areas yes. to like kind of do the rest of your leveling. Yes, so the big thing is, which Blizzard announced this at BlizzCon last year, but it's now into a f a a effect. If you buy the base game of World of Warcraft, so the 1999 one, and you start paying for a subscription, not only do you get to play, you can play every expansion up to the new one. So that includes Battle for Azeroth. They so you basically choose... I, th that's I think that's been tradition for a while, where no, at least like the, no, the previous, or like at least two. So before this, if I'm correct, you had to buy the new expansion to start playing like the end game content. Oh, yeah. In this, you don't have to. So, what the big thing is, is once you reach level 10, you go talk to a character named uh, Chromie, and she allows you to pick wherever you want to level. No matter what the expansion, no matter what your level is, the expansion caters to what level you, you are. So, when you hit level 10, and you want to go straight to battle for Azeroth, you can totally do that. Every, nice. every enemy, every boss will be at your level. So before, if you had gone into battle for Azeroth and you were, say, level 75, 80, every, care, every uh, enemy in battle for Azeroth would be 110. Because that was the base level you had to be to start the battle for Azeroth content. Now, that's completely gone. You can start wherever you want, you can go wherever you want, you can hop around, you can skip around. So once you beat a expansion, Chromie comes back to you and is like, hey, where do you want to go next? You can choose wherever you want. So they've almost turned it into like a greatest hits collection. In sense. Yes, Basically. kind of. And it is, the, it is the, mm -hmm. and I've only been playing since like Legion, so I don't have like a great like thing for this. But this mm -hmm. is the best pre pre patch I've ever played in in WoW ever. And this isn't even Shadowlands content yet. They're slowly adding Shadowlands content. You can actually see the map of of the Shadowlands when you go into the map map screen when you fly over ice crown the entire sky has been blown out so you can see the shadowlands above ice ice crown but there's no shadowlands content yet there's rumors that we're getting that content in around two to three weeks but people have no idea but oh my god uh again i'm writing a blog post on why this is the best time to get into a wow at mm -hmm. at the moment because oh my god it is the best time to get into wow 100 percent and i, love I, I fully a agree lot. with that huh I just said I fully agree with that. Yeah, it is. Um, plus, uh, you hear that Final Fantasy fourteen people. Well, so uh. 
I'm trying to get my friends back into WoW because Final Fantasy XIV is great and all. I'm actually planning on trying to jump back into it this week sometime. But WoW oh, is really like... Good. WoW is at its peak at the moment. And it is the best time. It is the... You should absolutely jump in, even if you're on the fence. It is free up to level 20. So that means you can play the Exiles Reach stuff. And you can play one of the one of the old expansions up to level 20. All so right. it's definitely the best time. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll try to speed through... Um... <laughs> Uh, what I've been playing, because I surprisingly, it doesn't feel like I've been playing a lot just because I've been busy with work and um, so there's shit going on, but mainly I've been playing Yakuza 5 and uh, just to mirror Corey's experience, Yakuza 5 is still very, very weird mm -hmm. and um, it, it it's strange though, because starting with Yakuza 4, they started impl implementing more than one playable character in 4, um so they're kind of like split into chapters. Like chapter one, you play as Akiyama, then you go to <laughs> Saijima. And five continues that trend, but it feels more cohesive because the overarching story threads are kind of more present versus just like, now let's just randomly jump to this character. Mm -hmm. Although I've reached a weird point where, so I, I've played as Kiryu, I've played as Saijima, and now I'm playing as his um, surrogate daughter, stepdaughter. And uh, so yeah, oh, the, la yes. the, the, the last five hours of gameplay, I've just been being a a teenage pop idol. I'm doing oh, like yes. rhythm games, yeah. doing doing concerts. Yeah. I'm doing meet and greets where you have to make sure people don't shake your hand too long. And there's, there's, I need to get that day one edition now with everything because damn, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so yeah, that that part at least I'm just like yeah, okay. I, I know this is going to eventually tie in somehow, but this is. Like wow, this is just like a huge narrative stopgap of, of like momentum. <laughs> but um, yeah, overall, I'm liking it. Like all the characters play completely not not completely different. They have differently. They have their own quirks. But um, so when I actually went over to playing as Saijima, like he has this whole prison storyline where you, you're not trying to break out. You're just trying to do your time, and then you know things happen where you're kind of forced to break out. And uh, oh, they put it back in. Man. Yeah, he, he's the eternal prison boy. He can't get a break. <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> he got a break out, but uh, <laughs> twice. But um, yeah, it's just like the attention, the detail, like and how much care they put into each individual character that you that you meet. Like even in this prison, just like wow, this could be like its own season of TV, and it's just this very small part of a very large, uh, very serious crime drama game where you play as a Japanese teen idol. But. Uh, so yeah, even after that, you you escape and you get trapped in the in the woods and you go through like this entire five hour like side quest adventure. Where you're just hunting in the woods, like shooting deers and rabbits and bears, and you get into a fist fight with a bear. So you you know you're fighting him barehanded, <laughs> and it, it's a little unbearable no! how you barely make it out alive. I stop! Can't stop! <laughs> No more puns. <laughs> Get out. But uh, yeah, that, that's been about it for Yakuza Five. Um, you barely made it out alive, right? I I, I, no! made, I made that one. <laughs> no. Um, no more puns. I can't bear it. Uh, no! It's it's very good. I can guarantee you I, that. I I hate it here. <laughs> Let's see. I, I, I beat Dead Space Three. I think me and Corey kind of talked about that last time. It's nothing special. It's garbage. Um, it's I did. Garbage. DLC is good though. I did stream two similar games: uh, Sekiro and Metal Gear Solid Rise. And it's not Metal Gear Solid. It's just Metal Gear Rising. Um, yeah. Sekiro is still probably hands down my favorite Souls game to jump back into because. It's in, I need to play that because you know all, all the Souls games that they they require a high amount of skill to get through them. But like yeah. even in comparison, this is by far the most skill based because you can't grind out for levels. You need to know how to parry. Like blocking isn't good enough because people will break your posture and then they'll just wreck your shit. Is so there you, no leveling system? There no. there are there are upgrades you can get by killing like mini bosses and like upgrading what's your basically your Estus flask. I think it's your your gourd. You get gourd suits yeah. for it. But aside from that, no, like you, you just yeah. have to know how to parry. Which, which I gotta get back to that game. It's freaking that solid. Like a lot more interesting yeah. than like, like I mean, stop. like, because like when you first started talking, like part of my brain is like, I don't even know if I'd say from soft games or souls like souls born games require like so much skill as much as a lot of patience, because 
even if you're not so much skilled, you can figure out ways, like you said, you can grind out the levels, or you can even just figure out what to do. Oh, yeah, but, exactly. But with Sekiro, yeah, like, I mean, I've wanted to check it out, because I've heard it's, I heard people say, like, oh, it's the best one in a lot of ways. I, I would um, agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's like, you, you need to know how to parry, because as you were saying, like, in the Souls games... Um, you can like slowly chip away at a boss's health. You can like just cheaply run away. You c- you can keep yeah. your guard up the entire time, like as a fail safe, and uh, you won't take any damage from it if you're specced right. But you-, you just can't do that in Sekiro because even if you do health damage to someone, like that's not your goal. You have to keep the pressure on them to break their guard, and you do that via attacking and parrying. So if you're blocking and you're dodging, you're you're not actively doing anything, and you're making the fight go on longer than it has to. I will say, um, I'm that asshole who, like, I'll take my gloves off so I can get the fastest roll, and I don't even use shields half the oh, time. Oh, I, I do the exact same thing. Well, I do use a shield, but I do I do yeah. strip so I can get that that yeah. nice roll. Um, would you say that if I play, if that's my more or less my play style, more dodging than blocking except for when I need to, would Sekiro be easier to adjust to, or would it It still might be a that? rough adjustment, because I basically played the same way in dark souls like i would use my shield i would dodge and then you know obviously mm-hmm. bloodborne you can't block you can you can parry but yeah, i yeah. honestly in souls in the souls games and uh bloodborne i never fucked with parrying i was either dodging or blocking well here's the thing i i, I said this to jose a couple of streams ago is is uh bloodborne rewards you for being aggressive dark souls rewards you for being patient and Sekiro rewards you for a little of both Mm-hmm. It yeah. has you to be like a little bit more precise, so it it can yeah. be very so, hard okay. getting into it, but parrying, it is so rewarding. Parrying and accuracy in Sekiro is key. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, the the other game similar to that would be Metal Gear Rising, which Metal Gear Rising is it, there, slaps it, absolutely. <laughs> I I have notes down here for um, the soundtrack. The Vengeance. It's the best lo- word in that whole title. It's not even a real word. It's That's why it's so word. good. <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah, it's it's just fundamentally just like from a game design and, and gameplay point of view, it's it's I think objectively inferior to um to Sekiro. But it's got like so much style to it. It's got that platinum flash to it, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. where you're just like Absolutely. tossing a Metal Gear Ray, which you know in Metal Gear Two you had to like slowly take them out with RPGs. It's and here it's like now nah, I'm gonna grab it by the tail, fl- fling it into the sky, and like chop it up like piece by piece. And it, is, when, it is very anime. Well, it's crazy when you think, too, about how, like, the sequence of Metal Gear Solid 2, where you're just facing Ray after Ray, and Raiden is just completely broken the fuck down and exhausted. And then you get to 4, where it's like, he's cutting up things, but he's not cutting up Rays. He's cutting up, like, smaller little mini Metal Gears and shit. Mm-hmm. Then, in Revengeance, it's just like, I'm just gonna kill God, essentially. <laughs> Y'all are and, and this- that is, is, isn't that every uh, isn't that every JRPG ever? Basically, the good ones. <laughs> and Y'all uh, was th- forgetting this... that Revengeance gave us Jetstream Sam, and I love oh, Sam did. so oh, much. That that fucking shit eating grin is too. Good. Oh, I love Sam. Just He's like oh, oh, and uh, he this, makes this... he makes he makes my knees weak. Just the, uh, He's got two feet. I he think can step Jet, on us yeah. Sarah. Jetstream Just, oh, Sam yes, is both of us. Do it, <laughs> Jetstream Sam, I think, is Platinum's best rival. Hell yeah. Oh, Sam's so good. <laughs> and the, the soundtrack just fucking slaps. And just like the way uh, it's, it's implemented. It's on it, Spotify, too. Oh, so if you want I have Jetstream's Prince it. working. I have the CD. I think it's somewhere in my room. But yeah, I have it. And um, it's just the way it's used, like, even in the game. It's not just like an MP3, like, okay, yeah, play during the boss fight. Like, um depending on what stage you'll play certain segments of it and then like typically as you get like the boss on their last legs that's when the vocals kick and you're like oh fuck yes this is so fucking <laughs> hype so cool. <laughs> it is so fucking good it's like it's like i'm gonna be real it's like i don't know if i would say that the soundtrack is like objectively amazing but for what it's doing for mm-hmm. the, it's it's like you're playing a b movie essentially of, of the metal gear well y- yeah you're playing like a b to c tier movie of the metal gear solid um, universe and it's amazing and fun it knows exactly what it is it's having fun with itself so the music reflects that it's not like you're listening to the near soundtrack but it's not trying to be that it's just like, getting you amped and getting you in the mood and it succeeds mm-hmm. in that. 
Right. The best and, uh, walk around. I, I think just overall the plot, it just goes out of its way to like basically make a mockery of how stupid the series has gotten like with the mm-hmm. um with the uh, final boss when when he just starts like sucking like green spirit energy out of the ground out of a machine he heals like all his wounds right he's like what the fuck is that he just he looks he says nano machine son it's just yeah, like oh okay, yeah all those veins and his chest just is like <laughs> it's like he tries to go bar but he only goes halfway <laughs> Is. He's not Sam. He's not Sam no, Lovara. If they went for no bar, they'd have to put a different rating on it. It it is. It's just such a fucking good game. The uh, the PC port's a little weird nowadays, but uh, so I'd say probably the 360 version, which is backwards compatible on Xbox One, is probably the Ooh, way to it go. Is? I need to yeah. get that because oh, I have the that. PS3 version. I think it was on uh, Games for Gold for a while. Or, you know, for a month, but it, it was available. But are you going to play the Sam DLC, though? I already did. I, I already did. Hell yeah. Dude, I played that game like 20 times back to back back in 2013. I, I, I am all over this I think that was the first, like, DLC mission pack I, like, ever bought. Because I was so in love with Sam at the time that I was just like, give they, me more reasons to love him. They made it free after a while. I think I got it when it was still, like, 10 bucks, but it was the best 10 bucks I ever spent, so it's okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, what do we have on the docket? Uh, Blaine, do you want to go ahead and tease what our after show is going to be? Oh, sure. So, mm-hmm. I kind of told people, like, well, Jose knows and Sarah knows, but so I have some strong opinions about The Last of Us 2. Um, Seth, or Jose, has made a a good video talking about you know, things he, li- he he likes about the game and is interested in and also deconstructing the um, the uh, discourse that okay, developed around the game um, I have polarizingly opposite views which means that when we can get into spoilers it's going to be a very 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 interesting discussion in the after show uh, the long and short of it without spoilers is that I think The Last of Us 2 is something that... I think it's something that tried and failed to do something brilliant, but is not willing to admit it failed. Or at least uh, people on the creative side of it are not able to admit that. Um, I have a lot of issues with the way... The way that the discourse around the game developed was then used to nullify any and all criticism of it. Um, and the fact that this was also spurned on directly by the lead, uh, the director, Neil Druckmann. Um, he made, she would start internet fights all the time, um, over anything. And it would literally, and at one point, literally did hit the point where he was like, see, everything I told you, uh, everything they said about the game that was bad wasn't really bad and it was made up. So, so that's bullshit. And then that just, he just coasted on that anytime people would actually criticize things mm-hmm. like, Right. The transgender mm-hmm. narrative is not handled well. It is not handled well. Um, I mean, if you like it, I'm not telling you can't like it. I'm just saying that it is not well put together. There are inconsistencies in regards to that narrative that show up in other parts of the game's writing. Uh, jokes that are sexist that should not exist if they're actually doing the due diligence as Naughty Dog is known to do. All this obsession to detail while and, and, and getting in these internet fights when they're in the middle of a, not only being investigated for crunch, but being investigated for workplace abuse. And I found out later, like sexual abuse allegations mm-hmm. as well. Like, um, Seth, I can bring up that one thing about the one person, right? Yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Yeah. So like, I, I think it's gonna... been long enough. Like, oh, I'm, I'm oh I, gonna, ju- I just want to pre, I, I guess I should have preface this, but you know, obviously, um, Sarah, Corey and I, we, we're on the side of we we love this game, and I'm more but than welcome like but, every single point of view I on this. I haven't played it yet, and yes. I'm planning to. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's why I'm avoiding the big details. I want to yeah. I want to preface him saying like yes, I I I love the game. It's one of my favorite games of this year. But I also want to say there was a great Twitter post. I think I retweeted it this morning. That's at something like love what you want to love but love what you want to love while, while while criticizing the stuff that's bad exactly yeah. like, like every, every people vi- behind them like every that, viewpoint that's how i feel ab- yeah about it like i will yell praise about this game till the ends of the earth but i will criticize naughty dog i will criticize the 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 heads i'll criticize how the game handles stuff just like preface that going in like yes i will spew my love for this game 
but I know when stuff is shit. I know when stuff isn't good. It's yeah, not exactly. and, and it's, it's not unconditional. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's just yeah. such a fundamental foundation of like any art field. Like you can love something and still criticize, and like, ev- and th- there is some very valid things to say. Where, um, obviously, I love this game, and I and I recognize those flaws, and the reason why we point them out is so it can be better. Like you should always yeah. strive things to be better. Don't just mm-hmm. settle for what's fucking there. Like, if I'm being real, too, like, again, without getting into spoilers, like, my, I'm not going to call it hatred, my, my intense disappointment in this game Ugly. does not, does not start with, like, oh, I just hated the whole thing. I actually loved about, I want to say, 70 to 80% of The Last of Us 2. I appreciated what it tried to do, um... Gameplay mechanic decisions that a lot of people were very pissy about, I actually thought, as far as, we're going to say perspective, I'm not going to say anything else, um, were very, very good elements and a good thing to try. Um, I I just think that it does not stick the landing in the slightest, I think, and I think that those things by themselves wouldn't bother me again if it wasn't for, I mean, fuck, Neil Druckmann making triggered jokes on Twitter while he's be accepting, like, lauds and, accol- lauds and accolades and, and being a critical darling for your game about someone dealing with PTSD and trauma. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. You can't right. accept that and then make triggered jokes on Twitter. You can't instigate an entire mindset now of anybody who says this game is homophobic, transphobic, or problematic in any way is just a bad faith arguer, which he did on multiple occasions. So, mm-hmm. like... And this segues into something I've talked to Jose about, um, and this is present company excluded. I have not seen a fan base of people that love a game with such with such thin skin since like the Spec Ops the Line fans that still exist <laughs> for that. Oh jeez. Oh like, don't. I was I was about to make a terrible joke. I was be like, man, don't call me out like that. <laughs> I, I'll call you out later. But yeah. no, like. Do you? I have a question, Blaine. Um, do you think a, a lot of the... I, I, and this has nothing to do with, the, with like, the content of the game in general. Mm-hmm. But do you think that part of the uh, dissenting opinions of, of, of just flat out not liking the game... Um, do you think that it, it part, of the, part of it may be that the game came mm-hmm. out at the wrong time... Uh, being that we're in a pandemic still and everything and everything that's going on with it being an election year and all that stuff. Honestly, no, because the things that I don't like about this, I would not feel any differently 10 years from now or five years ago. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't Mm -hmm. feel the exact same way. Um, okay. I feel I feel and, like even like the general discourse that happened was because of those spoilers that got leaked so far ahead of time, and just like yeah. th- those that that really shitty part of the group, the internet really took the discourse away from people that want to discuss things like like Blaine wants to talk about, like we couldn't no, exactly. talk about because we were so busy dealing with the fucking shitheads on the internet. Mm-hmm. Plus, I, also. I, I... Sorry, on, really sir. quick on on uh, on Corey's thing about the whole oh we're we're in a pandemic. Year, and I'm not defending Naughty Dog, but who could have fucking thought that we would be in a pandemic year when something like The Last of Us 2 comes come, comes out? And to be completely honest, the people who were saying like, oh, this game shouldn't be released, or this game shouldn't come out, or this is really shitty on their part, that was a dumbass ar- ar- argument, because none of us saw this coming. No, of course not. Right. The only thing also, I'll say with that... Oh, go on. No, uh, sorry, just this really dumb point that I have is no one said this when, like, Resident Evil 3 came out. Of like, course, yeah, there were and... people who brought it out, who brought it up, and yes, the opening of Resident Evil 3 is a little bit too close to home, but it's, but it's like, no one said that. I, th- I think Resident we should all replay uh, Death Stranding now. I think it'll hit it a lot. I haven't harder. played it yet. <laughs> that one's like, that Death Stranding, <laughs> it's way too close to home. I, yeah. I also but, played uh, a... I just... <laughs> I just think that that our argument of the whole this oh, this game should go or else I was talking to a friend who was like oh the whole like biker game in a pandemic thing didn't sit well with with me it's too it's too close to home and I was like dude no one saw a pandemic happening when this game was yeah written. and this Man, game, no one saw games like this don't get made in a year they get yeah. made for like five yeah. yeah 
and that and those arguments were really pissing me off because no one saw this fucking happening like no one saw i would be hiding in my parents house waiting for amazon to deliver my my copy in a pandemic state like Mm -hmm. (laughs) like no one saw this coming but also bringing up what you said blaine the one thing i will say that i love that the last of us 2 is the type of game of is if you can get this is not calling anybody out but if you can get the right type of people to talk about this game in a in a academic slash non non uh oh, what the fuck what word is it in a way where you can criticize it talk about what it's done right and talk about what it could have easily fixed like sitting down with people who have different op- opinions about it you can have a beautiful conversation about That's why this I'm title. excited to talk about it here, honestly, because, like, I have been well actually more than I would care to admit about this. As yeah, a trans it's... woman who, whether I present fat, mask, or femme, I'm a trans woman on the internet. I'm outspoken and I'm an asshole. So, like, I'll but get well actually. That's, that's why I love you. And I appreciate that. Um, but, like, <laughs> but it, yeah. It, like, and, and something, again, like, this is not, like, at, at anyone here. Like, I'm just, I've. And I know Jose agrees with me on this because it's back to the thin skin comment. It's like, I've had so many times where I'm just having conversations with people about, like, things we don't like about the game. And then mm-hmm. someone will be like, oh my god. And I'm like, why are you fucking commenting? Just mm-hmm. fuck, fuck off. No yeah, one asked for I that think opinion. It's like, no, no matter what you say about this title, the fact that it could bring smart, well-educated people together to talk about it in such a critical way... And again, I come from like a film student background, but I come from a film student background yeah. who I had professors who wanted to push video games into this medium. I think this is a great, I don't know, I think this could be like an edu- like in not like an education tool, but I think this is something that could be. I think be it could absolutely be used, but I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about why yet. I, but, would just um, like to yeah. say, I would just like to say, Sarah, you're extremely lucky that you got those teachers because as for uh, you missed me, out, Corey. and yeah, as for me, I got teachers that were not video game oriented. I got maybe one teacher that was a nerd. And that's it. Otherwise, all of my projects, Jose could tell you, all my oh, projects yeah. that I did that were video game related or, or, you know, leaned into video games with the with the film medium and everything, I got weird stares and and very ignorant comments. Yeah, so. there, there, there's a lot of shuds there. <laughs> there's but, a lot of shuds. Um, so, just just to put had... on a cap on this. For, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Uh, really, really quick. Uh, Jose and I had a student teacher who was our guar prof. Professor, basically, Guar, for those who don't know, is basically like a writing class that is required to uh, graduate. Uh, she had a homestuck bag. <laughs> she oh, wow. would bring in her oh, fat. Oh wow! She would bring in her fat <laughs> PlayStation Three every Friday that a paper was due, and we would. Pl- uh, there goes Blaine. Bye, 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 Blaine. <laughs> uh, uh, th- she would bring in her fat PlayStation Three whenever a paper was due. We would play a survival horror game that was based on what we learned. So That's we played awesome. everything from Silent Hill to uh, Parasite Eve. Uh, we did Resident Evil. We didn't we do the first Last of Us? Uh, very briefly, and she did not yeah. have to control the camera, so it was a little weird. <laughs> we did. We did like the first hour of the Last of Us part, like like the first Last of Us, and it was mm. amazing. And then for one of my classes, I designed a point and click ad- ad- adventure game, and I had a teacher who was like so hella like do it, make the story. I will grade it like the correct way, and like I I. I don't know. I just think, like I said, no matter what you can say about The Last of Us 2, it's a game that can bring people to, together in a great setting that can, you can just have a discussion. Like, you can just have a great discussion about, like I said, with people who are willing to discuss it correctly. Yeah. Which you is can have an amazing discussion on it. Yeah, it's, and, and I think, had, say like, what you want, but I, I think that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and like, and, and something I do want to preface again, because we'll get into spoilers mm-hmm. and everything in the after show, like, I don't want to shit on people that enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. Um, what I really want to address is the fact, again, that like I, I'm tired of people ignoring a, a lot of people ignoring the bigger problems with this game just because of either the the the, the poison discourse that we talked about, or um, just I don't know. It almost seems like this attitude of like everyone is stupid except me. How can they not like this thing? But the thing mm-hmm. I like has to be perfect. <laughs> And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, mm-hmm. I like Metalocalypse. That is a series that has, like, multiple uses of the T-Slur. 
and other horrible shit in it, but it's mm -hmm. good parts are still good. Archer, the TV series, is hilarious. Early seasons are rough. Um, but, ooh, um, gonna, yeah, I'm just, just... Force. I can keep going. Like, yeah. there's, it, 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 it's about uh, knowing it what the some... thing is. Take it from someone who's, ex who's still excited for us. For us. Cyberpunk. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like, honestly, it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's like, if, if you love something and then somebody else comes along and they honestly don't like it, both opinions are valid. And, 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 and it doesn't exactly. mean that just because you like something, it's holy and it's untouchable. Like it's, if there, if somebody doesn't like it and they found things wrong with it, then they have every right to feel that way because maybe they're seeing something from a different point of view or in a different light that you didn't see because maybe you're blinded by your by your fandom or your nostalgia or whatever it is you know so don't tell that to Ava fans they get real mad really <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, i think just uh, you, most of that you, symbolism do doesn't that make coming? any sense whatsoever this is why I like the Kingdom Hearts fandom, because we talk shit on Kingdom Hearts all the time. See, I'm not even in the Kingdom but... Hearts fandom for the most part. I appreciate it, but I really only know a little bit, and my boyfriend is way more into it than I am. So, like, I've learned a bunch from him. Like, I'll learn more from Sarah, too. We will, we will spout our love for Kingdom Hearts like there's no fucking tomorrow. We will also criticize the fuck out of it. Yeah, yeah. somebody comes along and on like, that too new... We're like, we're like, okay. You're like, I know, right? Like, you, you, you are Fair enough. All right. Fair enough. All right, we, we got to move on to the news yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, That's just a good to, segue, just, though, because Sarah to, mentioned Cyberpunk. Yeah, just, just, yeah. To put a, just to put a cap on uh, that, uh, we will have a after show where we will very clearly announce mm -hmm. that we are in spoiler territory for The Last of Us 2. Yeah. So, for anybody I, that I, has I will, to... I'll I'll, I'll I'll be banished. <laughs> to the <laughs> Shadow Realm. Ah, oh, damn it, I was going to say it. I uh, beat you to it. But real quick, fun little topic, just just for funsies. <clears throat> so there, there's been a lot of Resident Evil uh, stuff going on. There's Resident Evil 8. There's the CGI series. Um, is it CGI series? Yeah. TV show, right? Yeah, yes, CGI yeah, series. Yeah. There's a Netflix movie. There's like another other movie reboot series that's going to be going on. So, so I thought it'd just be. I'm sorry. So it's a so it's a so it's an an, uh, an animated series. It's a live action series. And it's a, a live action reboot. Yes. Movie. Well, a movie, movie, yeah. Yeah. Wait, there's Why three things? Yes. yes. Three things being created. It's a yes. lot of Resident Evil. <laughs> okay, I was under the impression there was yeah, just but... two. Nope, there's nope. three. Nope. Wait, wait, wait. So there's so there's the live action reboot that's the one that's gonna be extremely faithful. There's the one that Sarah and I have heard about, which sounds like fucking not hot dog garbage but it just sounds like absolute utter nonsense it's it's, it's you're basically talking about like the one with the wesker kids correct it's yeah it's basically no i'm like, talking about the one where leon is like two days from retirement and chris and jill are fucking babies if a cow confused you would it mean utter uh, nonsense i was gonna say are you talking about the one where uh leon's already a cop <laughs> and he shot someone and that's why yes. he wants to quit the force yeah, the one that I'm like, this could only be good if if Leon quits and he's the only like he's the only good cop and he quit. Otherwise, it's shot bad. Don't do this idea. Wait, All right. So, so what? So what yes, we're gonna be doing? Yeah, he shot. He, I, I don't know, but he shot <laughs> Wait, really? someone. Oh, I was gonna say he's like um, what's his name from Die Hard? Oh, uh, I shot a kid. Oh, <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. So, so I, I thought it'd be maybe, a fun idea. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe, Jose, maybe you can, if you have the information, maybe you can differentiate between the three. <laughs> I think I it's. Be I think it might. I, I, so Netflix is doing the live action TV series, which um, is the Wesker Kids. Yes, the, yeah. studi the studios are doing um, a live action movie reboot, and then net not Netflix, and then there's also a CGI series that I that I, I, I don't know. Netflix is publishing. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, so there's a lot. But I thought it'd be fun that, uh, so obviously, you know, there's going to be a lot of different people casting this between all of those. You're not going to use the same people. So I just went ahead and put together a little list of who I would like to see cast as um, some of the main characters. Uh, so maybe you guys will disagree. Maybe you have someone else in mind. But let's start with uh, the best boy, the best villain in the entire <laughs> series, uh, Wesker. Get me out of here. No. And and do not uh, let him. Don't let want, Wesker. Hold on. I don't want. I don't want Wesker to die by a door. That's not adorable. Okay. 
I, I agree with your second pick, but not your first one, mostly because I hate Homelander. And I know you're supposed to yep, hate I, him, but my, I hate him. Yes. I, <laughs> Homelander I'm is home, Homelander is so fucking good in the boys. Like, um, I, I, don't, I, don't want to spo- I don't want to spoil anything, but just like there, there's very specific scenes where he just has a smile on his face and he's still like the most intimidating person in the room. Like that actor just yeah. fucking knocks it out of the park. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which like and for Wesker, you kind of want perfect. you want that to be like just him being there is enough to like yeah make think, I don't like, know if I'm gonna walk out of this room alive. Yeah, because like Wesker never really smiles. His 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 mere presence is what's terrifying. Like but, when he walks towards you and like Res Evil Five, like I I still shit my pants. However, when he like slowly walks however, towards you, and I'm just like. Michael Fassbender, because Wesker also has this intellectual part of him, and Michael Fassbender really. Uh, uh, kind of displays that intellectuality about himself very you know just very it's very palpable that he's a very intellectual person when he's in a room so I I, I think either one could work I, I think the reason I picked Michael Fassbender and I'm basing this mostly off his um, portrayal as David in Prometheus and Alien Covenant where yes, he, yes. he nails the stoicism mm-hmm. while being intimidating Walt, whereas uh, Anthony Starr the guy that plays Homelander has a bit more I don't I don't want to say personality into it, but like a charisma to it. Which I'm sure Michael Fassbender could do, but just based well, off those performances. It's more of like a sociopathic kind of like Yeah mm-hmm. way of going about portraying yeah, it's yourself. Like, I'm hundred yeah. percent aware of what I'm doing. I just don't care. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So maybe that maybe maybe you're right. Maybe he would be good as Wesker. You guys have any other suggestions I, for I Wesker? Agree. For the best um, boy? You know, like like, you know, um, like you got to remember that um, you know he was a member of Stars. Uh, you know um, he asked he like I'm assuming he had to interview for that position. Like <laughs> he, <laughs> him, bro, <laughs> he has to be personable in some way or manner. Yeah. So yeah. I would I would just need. He worked in the lab, so they probably did place him there. Yeah, I, um, I think it's canon that Umbrella placed him in that. And position. Irons is yeah. tied to Umbrella. Do you, do you guys remember? Think- do you I remember think the guy they got? Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, do you remember in the PS One version of uh, Resident Evil where uh, if Chris, when Chris finds a tyrant, he just laughs at Wesker like, oh, oh, oh and Wesker's like, hey, Chris, stop it. No. I saw that. Yeah, he's like, he's like, Chris, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but like that's the tone of the whole scene. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking great. Yeah, anyway, um, were you gonna say Mesa? I do. I do think that the actor that you have for um, Wesker. Um, I forget his name, but he plays um, number one in. Um, yes, yeah. He, I think um, he's, he was cast Umbrella, Umbrella Academy. Yeah, by the he, way. he was Umbrella cast Academy. in one in one of the uh, I think it was yeah. a TV series. Yeah, like if you see a picture of him in sunglasses, like oh yeah, that's Wesker. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's Space Boy. He's Space Boy. <sighs> Space Boy. Let's see for for Jill. Jill for Jill, I couldn't really think of anyone, but I think the actress they got for. Um, Resident Evil Apocalypse, the uh, second live action movie. I think she she got the part. I don't know. I don't know because she seemed to she seemed to like look the part for sure, but she just seemed to like. Ah, uh, how do I put maybe this? too stoic? Maybe yeah. Too, it was like she was just like too stoic, too like CSI. Well, like I don't know. It was just well. I think she fit really, really good, uh, mostly because mm-hmm. uh, when you read the extended universe, if you read the extended universe, like, you don't need to, you find out that uh, what happened at the mansion basically toughened Jill up to the point where she was kind of a jackass a little bit. And okay. I think the I think the chick who played her in Apocalypse did that super well, and then the remake of 3 recently played that super well, because Jill was mm-hmm. both traumatized and she not really portrayed that trauma but like showed that trauma the, as her just there is a bit of it in the beginning thing. she was like more she or is, less kind of numb yeah and i think that i think the chick who played her in apocalypse did a really good job in showing that like tough side of jill like that jackassy side of mm-hmm. jill because she was done mm-hmm. she was done with umbrella she, she just wanted to get the fuck out of there and then they come back and she's like fuck like I just I think if and I love her as Joe like I, I just think Apocalypse is is one of the better live action films, um, not just because uh, not just because they had Odin Fear as Carla, mm-hmm. but just but just because like it it it, it 
to me, of course, everyone's gonna have different opinions, but to me, Apocalypse was a awesome uh, cinematic retelling of of three. Fitting, in I think it's the best universe. one in the series. Yeah, and I, I actually, I will say uh, that I, I do like in the remake of Resident Evil Three that they actually do touch on, basically going off what Sarah said, they touch on oh, the wait. PTSD of, uh, of Jill. Yeah, she has some flashes in the beginning in her apartment, right? Yeah, she has yes. flashes yeah. of her turning into a zombie, and, which is so good. I love know, that and scene then, a lot. And you know, I, I won't, I won't say anything because some people obviously have trigger warnings, but there are, there is a part in that game that is. Um, you know, it, yeah. it's part of her flashback, and it involves PTSD. So, all right. Keep keep in mind for my for my picks for Chris. I'm I'm thinking oh, of had, Boulder. I'm I thinking. Of Jill. Oh, oh, good. Sorry. Also, I just want to say when I was shaking my head, I may have misheard Sarah. I was shaking my head at Resident Evil Apocalypse, not at Resident Evil Three Remake. That game is possibly yeah. my favorite. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. But um, for Jill, I have one which this is feel this is awkward because I don't like the fact that she was in a kind of a transphobic movie recently but I'm having trouble thinking of someone I could think of would be better for Jill and she's been in a Resident Evil movie I kind of feel like Michelle Rodriguez could do a really good job as I Jill. like that I like that a lot because mm. she's really good at playing like the as long as she doesn't die some shit stoic badass you yeah. know yeah finally give Plus, her a good role in a Resident Evil movie mm -hmm. yeah not just she yeah. dies and she gets comes back as a clone of, so they bring her back oh, in yeah. five, and they just kill her off immediately. Oh my god! Yeah, I knew that because they brought back like a bunch of people, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they brought back like they... Odin Fe Fear, and like brought back her, and they, I don't know. Five is fucking weird. And is it? And is it the actor of the team leader who gets turned into Swiss cheese, like in the yeah. third one or something? He, but he... it's not the same character. He's just there as another like umbrella spec ops soldier. He might be. Yeah. I'm not sure. I remember well, a lot of the Spec Ops soldiers were clones, if I remember correctly. Oh, so then there you go. So he might have just been a clone of himself. Except Man, for Hunk. Well, except, for Hunk. except for Hunk, he was a true Umbrella operative. Yeah, <laughs> Hunk was in there, Patriot. randomly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Oh, don't get me started as... And I love this actor, but the guy they got to play Chris... Like, I don't... It, oh. Yeah, I'm... I'm kind of iffy on it. I, for for my I picks, love like him as what? I'm like, so ouch. familiar with so many of these. That's why I'm being quiet for most of it, this. I'm sorry. It, it, no, it's all good. no, um, but, Chris but for, was in Afterlife, and the actor they got to play him is the same guy who played Captain Cold on like The Flash and stuff. Mm -hmm. But he played Chris as this like jackass, and it was so weird. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm jackass Chris, and I'm like, whoa. I know for my picks, at least I'm I'm very. And my, my mental image of Chris is Resident Evil 5 Chris, the eternal boulder boy. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, so, Tom so, Hardy as boulder, as boulder yeah, boy, yes. Yeah, so I have Tom Hardy and Henry Cavill just because they, I, I, they both, I think Henry Cavill probably has a better face for it, but Tom Hardy's just like, he can be a bulky ass dude, and that, that's what I want. I would I even want. fight that huh? Tom Hardy would be a better face for it because he's got that fucking mailbox. Like, I'm thinking mm -hmm. Mad Max Tom Hardy. That mm -hmm. would be yeah, like Chris Redfield ass looking face. Mm -hmm. You can put the little scars on him or whatever. Verse? Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Get just a, a brick. He just said big old chunk of meat. <laughs> it's a brick wall, why not? Which Punch I am here for. Just draw a face on a brick wall and then you get your Chris. Ouch. For, Chris um, is deeper than that, damn it. For Leon, I couldn't think of much because I was trying to think, like, what actor can nail, like, the little swoopy thing he's got going on? Just, Whoa. like, yeah, young Lee. Is that just, young Brendan Fraser, like young? I, oh God! I didn't, even, yes. you know, that, I, didn't yeah, I didn't even think about that. I put. I, never I put. About that. I put young Leo I, DiCaprio. The actor yeah. they got to play Ooh, yeah. him in Retribution looked like him. Did not act like him. No. No. He was uh, also re like randomly Russian all, or something. I don't yeah, remember. First of all, Retribution is like. How do I even describe it? It was like. Oh, it was God. like if a, if it, it was like if a if a college student had a shit ton of money <laughs> and decided to make a Resident Evil movie. Like, Did they have <laughs> like Soviet zombies like on a tank, and they also had chainsaws? Yes, and also Barry was in it. I don't I understand what that. You need a, was. Retribution's probably my favorite. This is because Barry it is so dumb. It too, it was weird. He has they the best ruined. death scene. He has a they great death scene. They literally, they were. I, I swear, they had to have been tired of the fans 
like complaining about how the movies weren't like the games and so they literally just like out of spite threw in their favorite characters be- just to be like fine oh f it here you go <laughs> now we're gonna kill them all yeah I have, I have only seen the first three of the live action movies i, I enjoyed the first one did not enjoy the second one because you're really gonna try and make nemesis sympathetic you fucking cowards number three them be not cowards. Cowards. i don't know and then the third one i just remember being like okay whatever i don't give a shit about it. Yeah, and three and the, four are probably so the, the weakest. So the final one, I think it was Resident Evil, the final chapter or something like that. The yes, final, I did not see that one. And the I don't final one yeah. is actually, final yeah, I think it's actually Fucking decent. Shit. It's actually decent, I, it, I it, think. It, it's just weird because Retribution ends on such a great note where they team up with Wesker. She has her powers back and they, it, it, uh, it zooms out of the White House. It's just like demons flying through the sky and everything. I'm like, oh, yeah, the next movie is going to be such a B, <laughs> B movie over the top action. And, and it just mm-hmm. kind of drops that. Yeah, I mean, I'd be also be more like I'd be more inclined to be like, oh, I'll go check them out. They seem like fun movies if I didn't also learn about like how Paul, D- Paul W.S. Anderson is a, is responsible for, like, a stunt person. One being killed and one being horrifically murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah, like, I'm not trying to sprain anyone's parade. It's just, like, I... I no. It, it's all good. The oh, moment, I mean, no. I saw this... I saw this really great Twitter post where someone said, you know, everyone shits on the Resident Evil movies, but they're also one of the only horror fran- franchises that's made a billion dollars with a female lead. That's yeah, there's something to be said for that. To look over, which I'm totally here for, like, Paul Paul W.S. Anderson is a jackass, he is terrible, but I will say the Resident Evil movies are great for showing that a female lead can make a billion dollars. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely, they're not and mutually exclusive in that regard. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Let's see, totally going here, back to the, uh... Yeah, so, so, so... I'm, so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I'm Mason Good. I just want to say for my pick, uh, Leon would be, uh, for, real quick, just the... The, the the face the face model for Arthur Ar- Arno Dorian from Assassin's Creed Unity. His name is Dan Genot, I think. All right, that's all. That was some pretty decent I mean, French. Yeah, that's that's I think better than because young Leo mm-hmm. DiCaprio doesn't exist anymore. So exactly, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yours, modern Brendan Fraser, get him back in Hollywood. That, that could work. <laughs> I like Brandon Fraser. Have him, have him come back as Leo. Um, uh, from no, Claire, I, I, I actually did not look up her name. I think uh, the woman so that plays Scarlet Witch from the she's MCU actually movies. The, she's actually the younger sister of um, the twins, twins in Full House. Olsen, Olsen twins. twins. She's the youngest Olsen sister. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. shit. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think like just even um, like her I face like matches pretty pretty clearly with uh, Claire. She's the third Olsen yeah. twin. She, well, mm. yeah, she's not a twin. I mean, but yeah, <laughs> that, that was the joke. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she's the fourth musketeer. Um, but uh, yeah, anyone have any ideas for Claire? No, I think I that's mean, a good pick. I honestly yeah, think I, you I nailed guess. it. So, a uh, controversial choice here. I think the cast that they already have, because because like people don't realize that this movie's already shooting. Like, oh yeah, already they've already casted set. it. They've yeah, already it's already done. done. The cast have taken pictures of their trailers. Like this shit's happening. Mm-hmm. I honestly think the cast uh, yeah, th- this they is have just for fun. Is pretty damn good. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. For like a reboot or like a retelling of Resident Evil, I'm down for who they have casted. I really like their Leon. Like me too, a lot. Oh, uh, he he, lo- uh, I love him. He looks great. I can't wait. Because doesn't. See him. Because r- remind me, Renan and Sarah, the, the the movie's premise basically, I think, takes place after the events of the first game. Yeah, so we don't know what, what it is. The only way that I know is through the leaker Dusk Golem, who has a bunch of Resident Evil um, uh, tidbits and stuff. He just got out of the leaking game, but he came back to let people know what he's heard that, that the plot of the new movie is. And from what it sounds like, they're actually trying to mix one and two together. Oh, okay. Interesting. Huh. From what it sounds like, they're mixing one, I two, and a happening. little bit of three. So because it's like Claire's already in Raccoon City. Leon's already uh, there. He's like he's like an you know established what? officer. You know what I like, think might happen now that now that you say that? I think what's gonna happen is like the beginning of the movie is going to start at the mansion 
and That's it's going to like think. yeah and then it's going to go into they're they're like this they survived and they're coming back to the city and then all of a sudden they hear these breakouts are happening and it's going to merge into two and and part of resident evil 3 and then That's probably what happens and then it'll probably end with a giant nuke going off you know a typical like and yeah in typical course, resident evil fashion of let's course, see take, take dust golem with a grain of salt he hasn't always been correct but his resident evil knowledge is surprisingly has been very accurate so I trust him in this. It took a little bit to get used to, especially for the fact that Leon shot somebody and now wants to quit the force. It's like that. Wow, that's timely. Resident Evil didn't expect you to uh, be the timely franchise. Let, let's see. Just just to wrap up the uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just to wrap up the uh, casting because I know Corey has to go soon. Um, let's see for Barry. Uh, what's the dude's name from Stranger Things? David Harbor, I think, nails the look. Alternatively, also, I yeah. I am uh, I I have a crush on that guy. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> David Harbor Don't is David Harbor in Stranger Things is like he is the realistic epitome of Bara, like <laughs> oh, yeah. or like Dad Bod. You know, it's like, it's like uh, you think he's just dumb small town sheriff at very first and then you realize no he's actually really fucking smart he just doesn't he doesn't have time to like he's not he's not showy or book super book smart but he's smart as a whip regardless yep mm -hmm. alternatively uh if they want to show a broken down barry they can go with the guy that plays ron swanson i can't i can't man <laughs> he's too comical i can't see him in like I mean, I've seen him in serious stuff. Like, I've seen him play in serious stuff. He could have been a Jill sandwich. I was going to say, like, I can imagine him just saying that. That's true. That was that too is... close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. Jill sandwich. <laughs> and uh, I, I think we pretty funny coming from him. <laughs> I think we can all agree that the most appropriate casting for uh, Ada Wong would be uh, Scarlett Johansson. That, that's proper oh. representation, right? No, oh, yeah, that's totally. garbage. Absolutely. We're, we're all about whitewashing here, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. But, um... You know, like, the the uh, movie's already getting hate for casting a, a act of color as a Leon and Jill, I think? Am I getting Oh, it? yeah, because the, the guy from Apocalypse Now, or Now Apocalypse, sorry, my bad, uh, from Now Apocalypse, the series that is on Stars, um, which is really good, by the way. I recommend it. It's only one season so far. But uh, he is a really good actor and he mm -hmm. also back in when he was younger in his younger days he played in uh the show on nickelodeon called victorious um <clears throat> so i Man, think that's, that's a really a, good that's, I think, a, that's a throwback <laughs> it is i think that's a really good pick for leon um it, mm -hmm. it we've learned very much it, it's it should be obvious to everyone but it isn't that just because they depict a character as white in the first place doesn't necessarily mean they need to be white the entire time throughout exactly. every single medium. You know, it uh, just. But I mean, what about this way? When, when yeah. white people start start like uh, being unable to get jobs because they have a white sounding name on a job application, then maybe I'll start to maybe believe that discrimination against white people exists. Uh, yeah, everyone knows white people are the most oppressed group in all society, only next to gamers. Oh yeah. Side white note: Christian I gamers. Side note: I would. Uh, side note: I would just like to. I would just like to say that somebody actually did try to argue with me before that. Um, uh, they were discriminated against because uh, jobs are, or places of business are now are now. Uh, he said he said forced to um, hire people of color because of uh, diversity rules. And no, they can just fuck off. And I was just like, oh my god, you just don't know how layered that statement is, do you? No. Yeah. Or the fact <sighs> that like the oh, criticisms go. to be made about that shit end at like companies that do try to hire like the most white passing people or whatever and inoffensive people to fill sort of like that's when that shit happens not when like uh, sorry it's a much more bigger issue and i'm white as hell i don't think i have the right to fucking even get it <laughs> but but it's not but it's not that that is bullshit what that person tried to tell Corey is bullshit is what i'm talking Obviously, about yeah. no i know trust me i know <laughs> oh just just to go back to my joke answer i think karen fukuhara would probably knock it out of the park Remind me who she is. Uh, she plays um, Kimiko in uh, in the Boys. Oh, 
Oh yeah, you know what? Oh I yes, agree. she would. Hundred percent. I agree. Hundred percent. I love her. All right. Uh, um, damn, we are almost towards the two-hour mark, so we have to get going to the. I, I'm I'm of three minds, not two. Uh, one, so Corey has to go soon. Uh, I believe you have a cutout time of like within the next three minutes or so. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna say a few more words and then I'm gonna pop out. I'm sorry for rambling right. for the record. No, oh no, it's good. all good. <laughs> um, Love to have you here, Blaine. Love to have you here. So, so we didn't okay, actually right. get we didn't actually get to too much of the news, which mm -hmm. I don't feel like we should. Because, man, the first episode we did was, like, fucking three and a half hours, and I don't really yeah. want it to go on that long. <laughs> um, so we might just, next episode, we might just skip, like, the recap of what we've been doing and just focus, have, like, a news focus I'm show. I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that way you can spend, like, the proper amount of time on it. <laughs> um, yeah, all I can really add for input would be Crunch is bad, and I have mm -hmm. no idea about anything else, so, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can... Yep. yeah Crunch sucks. Crunch is, uh, um, Crunch is not good. Crunch is right. bad. Um, go EMD. There. <laughs> and we have plenty of time to talk. We have no worries. We have plenty of time to talk about the news next week. I, I think because uh, there's there's a lot to talk about, and um, you know it's still October. I think so. We're not into November yet. I think November is going to be a heavy, heavy uh, oh, my... news month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, just heads up, we are we are six weeks away from next year consoles. So. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> also, uh, I would just like to mention that, um, six weeks. and this is really? this is this is outing me in some way, shape, or form. But uh, for all those supernatural fans, we only have a few more weeks left of the series. I just that like to say, still going? yeah, we're yes. on the final episodes, and we're at season fifteen. And it's... That shit should have ended when Crypto <laughs> left the show in season four, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> all all right. I'm no. sure. I'm sure a lot after of was interesting, but a lot of people agree with you. I I was the one of one of those people that like stuck with the show and then jumped out of it and then binge watched the crap out of it, and then now I've been following it for I a have, while. I have not seen any of it. My girlfriend wants me to catch up. It's like how many fucking seasons? Seventeen? Fifteen? Okay, not not We're, as bad. This is this is the fifteenth and final season. Okay, I, so. I got some catching up to do, but um, but, so, yeah. so yeah, back to hell. Yes, <laughs> multiple times. They've all gone back to hell multiple times. It's oh, like great. at this point, going to hell is like walking through a door. Remember when that was a big deal in the end of season yeah, two? I know. <laughs> it's not anymore. All right, so I think we're gonna move on to the um, the last of us two spoiler right. talk because it's kind of necessary right. for in right. order to okay. discuss what I we need to. Right, so Corey, Corey you ready? You ready? <laughs> yeah. Corey, you ready? Bye, guys. You, you, See you wait, guys. wait, 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 wait. You guys have any last wait, words? Any um, last words? Eat your vegetables, uh, take mm -hmm. your meds, drink water, and get some plenty of sleep. Also, um, Kingdom Hearts is the best game in the world. Okay, bye. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You are booted. <laughs> bye, guys. I'll see you next week. All right. Bye -bye. See, you. see ya. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Yeah, Everyone's... Just just All right. I need to readjust these video layers, because now that they jumped out, they're all out of wonk. Um, okay, so, show, okay. While he's, while he's, while he's distracted, playing, I have been playing Diablo 2, and it's been a fucking blast. Yes, we have. It's all been right. great. So while, while I fix this, I just want everyone in the chat to know, like, we are going full-on spoilers yeah, for The Last of Us 2. We won't We're necessarily... <laughs> it's not necessarily the focus in terms of, like like we're reviewing like the end but just like it's necessary in order to talk about what we need to talk yeah. about so while i, I fix I this to bring up store critical shit to even take a dent in what we want to discuss yeah so blaine you want to take over while i fix your guys's cameras sure um so to start off like jose said you know the heavy spoilers um the whole game um I think in order to compartmentalize exactly how i feel about it it's basically like i I gotta like quickly run through my experience of the game. Like I got, I loved the introductory area of like, or not to introduce the introduction to Washington, because you, so you're talking about the theater section, correct? 
before the theater section, the open okay. area that's like I almost felt like Evil Within Two. Oh, I was okay. just exploring all of like the broken down city. It was very somber. Uh, I love that. The uh, the one with the bank that you could go into, but you didn't have yes. to. Yes, okay, the bank, I, the... I love the bank, by the way. I don't know if you found Nathan Drake's ring, but I did. I did. Oh, I did. In the bank. <laughs> even though, even though that, like, I think I watched someone on an LP address, like, wait a minute. This makes no sense, though, because if they've been here since emergence, since infection day, and they're still alive, who have they been eating? But, um... Yeah. But then again, they, they or why are they not clickers, I guess? But either way. Um, like, so I love that section. Um, I actually did not hate the opening at all um i like the fact that it bounced back and forth that also clued me into the fact that we're going to be playing as abby again it's not even a tour mm-hmm. at that point um they wouldn't have you do a whole sequence like that just to never do it again mm-hmm. and um i did not expect that joel was going to get killed so early but i also was totally fine with that because same here <laughs> I, think, I think that um again it's I, as jose put it in his video like it's he he, his chickens came to roost. He got what was coming to him, mm-hmm. and and while I am upset, like in the same way that like you know as a, as a as Ellie is a surrogate and a, a, an audience surrogate for us, like I do feel upset that he died. But at the same time, I understand it, and it's also kind of what I wanted to happen. I wanted there to be something driving things forward mm-hmm. other than just like him being him again and blah blah blah. Um, I will say really really quick to that. I listened to a podcast that had Troy Troy. Baker and Ashley Johnson on it and the way they shot that scene is so depressing and so sad but they did it in a way where Troy did not say a word to Ashley the entire day because he knew what was going to happen and she did it and yes it it was something like that uh, because Neil had told Troy about it and Troy chose not to tell Ashley Mm -hmm. even though like because they because they wanted a reaction that was real and apparently those tears that ellie were crying actually legitimately cried that's like it was good shit it's a legitimate it was legitimate like he just looked her in the eyes the entire scene like even though you could see when when joel was off screen it was just ellie screaming to him apparently troy troy baker had locked eyes with her the entire scene and did not look away and it was apparently a very emotional scene that they shot, and and after that, Troy and Ashley hugged for like a really long time. I, I think just to cut in, just because I, I've I've been just kind of listening as I'm fixing the cameras, but um, I think just the people that just refused to play the game or just had like this really shitty thought in their head, just like, well, this game fucking sucks because Joel's dead. I'm just like, um, so so Blaine, you've seen my video, so I think I opened it with like a character dying in a story does not mean the, the, it, that the story's bad. That does yeah. not equal, like, oh no, my favorite character, now I can't enjoy this. I'm just, it's just... especially just, when Pay attention to the story and, like, what it's about. Yeah, because, like, and like you addressed in the video, the whole climax of The Last of Us 1, because I replayed it right before I played 2, The Last of Us 1, I used to think back on it, like, oh, but it tries to frame Joel as a hero, so I don't know if I like it. And then I replay it, and I'm like, no, they don't. Yeah, they, they, there's really a hard, yeah, no. there's a hard moment of you're still playing as Joel, but this ain't right. Yeah, it's like that whole last sequence. It, it is surprising to me that anyone came away with from the ending of The Last of Us One, be like, yeah, Joel's the hero. Like, yeah, I kind of, I was with him in the moment. I'm just like, I don't want them to do this to my surrogate daughter. Fuck this. But like at the end of the day, it's just like, yeah, he fucked over humanity. He did something really mm-hmm. fucked up. The and biggest thing is he didn't give her a choice exactly mm-hmm. and so it's like yeah joel's a piece of shit that that's undeniable if you walked yeah. away thinking joel was was 100 percent morally justified then I, I don't know what to tell you 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 weren't playing the same fucking game no, exactly. i do also oh. think they handled the because it's like the one thing i like about the last of us too and i thought about this after i beat it because again like with death stranding my epiphany with this game didn't come to literally like the last hour i was like holy shit i understand it now um was the fact that ellie never truly for 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 forgave joel like you have that scene right at the end which is a absolutely beautifully shot scene like yeah. troy and ashley don't get enough credit for just how amazing actors they are like just the fact when she looks at him and says i think i can learn to forgive you yeah like, exactly was so fucking beautiful and i, I, I guess correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think she said 
I think she said that she could never forgive him, but she can try. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was she, like, yeah, a, she I'm said something to like to, to learn to learn this, how to forgive give, you. Make any promises. Because I think like yeah. one like one of the shitty memes going around the internet is just like, yeah, Ellie goes through this whole adventure, then she just forgives a person that killed her father. I'm just like, n- she did not forgive Abby. That's not like a big central theme of the story. It's it's like a like you could obviously like yeah revenge but like a deeper part of that is obsession and just yeah. ellie refusing to let shit go like obviously like yes what joel did and at the climax of the first game is fucked up and she she deserves to know what happened but nothing came out like like nothing substantial came out of her like finding out the truth of that if she had just let it go and that, that's, that's not something to like excuse like you know people that do shitty things behind your back it's like but like, I mean, like the theme of obs- uh, the theme of obsession is there. It's not about forgiving. I mean, I can yeah. even use that to springboard into basically my biggest problem with the game. Like, um, I, you know, like 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 I said, you know, like I love that first part. We're exploring the area. Um, I actually consistently enjoyed the game, and I didn't. I was like, this isn't misery porn. This is this is a hope within the hopelessness. This is you know finding mm-hmm. these reasons to go on. And even when happy, you. that's how it was. My, don't say thank you yet. The problem, well, no, I mean like thank you for saying it's not misery porn. Well, because that don't was say what, thank you yet. Okay. <laughs> um, the problem comes in where you know you get through the whole meat of the story, and then and I'm gonna save the the uh, Lev stuff for later just because that is its whole own thing I gotta get through. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you get through this whole story that has been consistently about like you know clearly Ellie just can't let go and Abby also can't let go, but then Abby takes the first response of just leave i'm not gonna kill you i could kill you dead to rights right now and your fuck and, and your fucking pregnant girlfriend but i'm not going to right where i thought that story was going was i thought that we were playing when ellie was like i got the fact that when ellie and dina are at the cabin and they're talking oh, the farmhouse rather they're talking and their conversation before ellie leaves is an incredibly vague conversation specifically mm-hmm. in the sense that Ellie doesn't say I'm going to kill someone I'm going to she says I got I can't leave it alone I have to finish it I have to I have to deal with this and Dina's telling her you know if you go don't experience everything else. and when you get to uh, California Santa Barbara you know Ellie's comments the whole time are again these vague statements of they better not have killed you yet not mm-hmm. before I could they better not have killed you yet and all these other things I was playing through that with this hope of like if they actually subvert what most people expect and they have her not as i wanted i wanted her to even not necessarily forgive abby but to basically be like i didn't come here to kill you i came here because i need to acknowledge why i understand why what you did but i need to finish this because it's eating me up inside and i just can't go on like I, some mm-hmm. kind of middle ground i would have completely flipped i would have even forgiven most of the transphobic shit just because at least all came to this point but like, the fact that it then just did the same thing over again the same tired story of no she just can't let go she like like to me get revenge like to me what you suggested i think like that's absolutely interesting thing that um i might have even loved even more seeing an execution yeah but um uh, i think like just even a general like game design issue is that this game doesn't have like the best pacing and and, and Which, most people yeah, kind of no, it might, doesn't. It for sure yeah, doesn't. Yeah, no. and what most people's critique is aimed specifically at that part of the game because it's like, okay, this game's dragging on. I'm not having yeah. like as fun playing it, but like, and as you said, like, it's just kind of repeating that same theme over and over. But I think like that's the point. You're supposed to be like, oh, come on, just just fucking end. Just let this go, Ellie. Just just stop. See, and I get. That, and I feel like that. I that's like just... a meta experience in in of itself. Yeah, no, and I get that. I mean, you're talking to someone who I love near and I love like the idea behind. Dragon Guard and that's literal same ex- exact example of mm-hmm. game design but like there's just I, I don't know I just can't give Neil and his writing team the, the, the benefit of the doubt on this because of these issues I brought up before like the fact that I mean we'll get into Lev so Lev um, is as for I mean, you two know but just in case anyone who is listening who did not play the game but doesn't care about spoilers Lev is a member of the group known as uh, what are they known as the scars or no, I'm sorry the seraphites don't yeah, ca- yeah. don't call it don't call us scars yeah, yeah they don't could call be it. either <laughs> they could be either um but so the seraphites are this you know post post-apocalyptic uh almost not not quite tribal. They, 
Yeah, they're a religious cult, and um, you know they, 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 they are you know almost like totalit. They're they're very authoritarian. Christian, even though I know that Neil didn't like people saying that they were crazy Christians, but I'll get into that later. Um, and so you meet Lev and Yara, his sister, as Abby, and the way that story started, I enjoyed because I was like, okay, where are they going with this? They're not just starting right out with, like, you know, is it transphobia or not, or whatever. Lev is clearly a trans man. He's voiced by a trans man. They got consult consultation from trans men or trans people on this. Um, a quick correction, I, could, I, I don't believe the actor identifies as such. I could be wrong. No, I... I believe they go. I believe they go by. I believe they go by not in binary. Oh, um, I mean, I think that's fair then. Um, as long as they're, I'll put it this way: as long as they're trans mask or DFAB trans, even if they're just non-binary, if they're not, if they're DMAB, then there is a bigger fucking problem here that I can get into in a whole. Hold on, I follow them on Twitter. Give me a second. Yeah, check. I'm pretty sure they're DFAB. Yeah, but regardless, um. So, you know, you you learn you learn the things going on and my first warning signs were Seraphites calling Lev an abomination as just random NPC barks. And I was like, oh okay, so we really are just doing the same story that trans people trans men especially like just keep dealing with. Um You you get further in and you like it's weird. You you have these very genuinely sweet, amazingly well interactions where like when they call when they dead name Lev and Abby approaches Lev about it in that level because Lev just stops even moving forward. But she doesn't pressure him. She's just like, so they called you this. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, I'm, you know, they clearly you're bothered. It's like, are you okay? And he's just like, well, do you want me to tell you about it? And she's like, only if you want to tell me about it. And he goes, yes, I, don't. I loved that. That's a great I loved sequence. that interaction. This game uh, a quick interjection on, on their Twitter. Um, Ian yeah, goes yeah, by the right. slash he. Hey. They, Say again, they, Seth. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, um, on Ian's Twitter, um, Ian goes by they slash he. They he. Okay, so so they he. Um, Just clarification. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So like, you have interactions like that, which are great. And then what kills me is you have those interactions that are great, but then you still have this stereotypical ass fucking story of the trans experience and circling to like you have a character who's trans who is you find out eventually because lev decides to tell you or no sorry yara actually tells like you know lev decided he was a man and wanted to and wanted to be behave as such community ousted both of them treated them as um like infidels or abominations whatever you want to call it and that's why you meet them up where you do because they were going to try and kill lev and they were going to try and kill yara too um and and I rem at that moment, I thought back about the fact that you find files as Ellie talking about how the scars function, and their whole thing is they welcome people in from outside, but when you do, you leave your identity behind. Whole new identity, you get a new name, you have a new job, and you physically alter your body by way of the scar of scarification. Now, what what does that sound like in comparison to what we're talking about? Sounds exactly like what it is. It's yeah. uh, you know, pe people becoming trans. It's, it's it's a it's a lot of the trans experience. It's finding yeah. a new name, a new structure. For some trans people, physically altering your body. I myself am actually very chill with my body. I may want to go on hormones, get tits. It's, I don't know, but I, I I like what I got. Um, and. So to see that imbalance, number one, already had me having problems. The fact that, that we get to this point, and I'm supposed to, you know, I'm expected to really be like, giving this story the benefit of, like, well, they're trying. But then I think back to the early game, when Dina tells Ellie that she's pregnant. And her instant reaction is, <laughs> it's not yours, jokingly. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, I get that that's, if these are two real people, I get that that's a joke because they know each other and they've had sex, you know, mm -hmm. going on downstairs. But from a narrative standpoint, from a writer's standpoint, you basically just said to everyone, Ellie cannot possibly be trans. So, hey, if you head cannon her as trans, go fuck yourself. And it just, it, it's, it, it's that, not to say that someone was being intentionally shitty, 
in the writing of this, and I know it went over a lot of but it's just one of these little almost microaggressions of reminding mm -hmm. people like me that the media does not cater to me. The media does not even want to really acknowledge me. And right. that keep up the status quo of well, women don't have... W women don't have dicks and can't get other women pregnant, so, you know, that's where the joke comes from. Where it comes from. And it's all of those things just add up to me eventually. And then by the time I get to the end of the game, I'm already having the... Like, I don't like where the narrative's in general. I don't like the way they handle I don't like the fact that his story is just such another fucking, like, he's just abused and abused and abused. I don't like the fact that he's dead named on top of it, even though even though the actual act of dead naming doesn't bother me. Because it is narratively appropriate. Like, I'm a firm believer that I don't think dead naming in general is a taboo thing you cannot do ever. I think it's something that requires nuance. I don't think this game had the nuance to actually deal with everything in addition to that. And I, I would assume it's just kind of a tired trope of just like, really? You can't have a trans character without having this be a plot point? No, exactly. Or even just figuring out a way, like, it'd be, like even if you just have a character say, like, oh, hey, so-and-so, and they're like, hey, that's not my name, and they're like, oh, sorry, and then they go on. Like, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. Or like, um... And also the, the way that you explained earlier, because again, it's very hard for me to speak on this topic, because I am a cis female, it's hard. But the way that Abby handles that scene actually got me to like her more than I yeah. thought I was going to. Because she handles it so as an adult, and it's just like, yeah. so what was that? Do you want to do you want to tell me? No, I don't. Okay, I completely understand. Mm -hmm. Like the I way that she handled of, that was beautiful to me. Like when that happened, I paused it. She, and I was like, like whoa. Yeah, like, I can even kind of forgive that she later technically also dead names Lev because she doesn't know the full story. Of Mm -hmm. and she instantly like she never does it again so I, i'm not even going to hold that against the character but again it's just everything adding up or like no and i like, like i said it's very hard for me to speak on it because i'm not i don't feel like i what's the words like i don't no no i guess you know. yeah and, like it's it's and, and, hard and like and something you brought up seth in your video was like you know the, when ellie finally goes back to the farm and you see all the things that have changed like i actually do really like that sequence um I, my biggest thing again is that i just was so i had given up on the story at that point so it did mm -hmm. not really affect me in that way right. but i can still appreciate things i mean i'll be honest i feel bad saying this i almost like i almost laughed at the situation with the fingers not because i'm laughing at ellie haha because that's horrible but just mm -hmm. the fact that i was like i almost saw it coming i was like you just it's like almost cliche after cliche for me even mm -hmm. though I would probably be eating that up if it wasn't for all my extra baggage that I already had, you know? Like, right. if Ellie, if Ellie's whole, like, if, if, if the sequence of events went the way that I wanted them to, like I told you, the, the semi-forgiveness or whatever, just wanting to work it out, and then she came back and then these things happened, I would actually probably be singing praises of how, what good symbolism that is. Like, even though you went for the right reason, shit still ended up going south. And still, and because that's the way life is so Right. You know? And I don't know, like... I'm trying to think if there's anything else specific. It, it, it's just... I know we have some notes down. Let me take a look. Yeah, take a peek. Let's see. Like, 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 like... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I, I can get back into the issue of, like, thin-skinned fans. Like, something that has been monumentally frustrating, too, is, like, obviously, like I've said multiple too darn Um, like... I, I can't fucking like thanks Neil Druckmann but I can't fucking get into a discussion of why things are bad without having people try to well actually me or get like bothered by the fact that I'm negatively talking about it mm -hmm. in any way mm -hmm. um seeing like you know or like and like one of those little things that added to it too again is the fact that like and I even have a screen cap in case anyone ever tries to fucking tell me I'm bullshit but like the fact that this game is all about dealing with PTSD and I felt so seen by that by what Same. PTSD disassociation yeah. feels like. And then and then you get to like Neil Druckmann on Twitter responding to someone else just going haha trigger, posting a picture of Luke Belcher at GIF of her like twitching rapidly. So I'm just like it, it makes me doubt that there is that there's really anything behind any of this. Any of that benefit of the doubt I could have given is lost with shit like that with everything else. Can I actually and, slide in really, really quick yeah, with go for the it. uh as because I'm very open about my PTSD. I am open about games learning to portray characters 
in a not exactly like a bright light with PTSD, but but the way that how how Blade did it, I can argue that at times Ellie is a awesome like representation of people with PTSD as someone who does suffer from it. Mm-hmm. The scene at the near near the end in the house with Dina. The way that Dina treated Ellie after she had that PTSD uh, attack and when she was just like, let it go. What happened with Joel has happened. You need to let it go. I was actually really angered by that scene because I've lived all my life with people just telling me, let it go. Mm -hmm. And with Dina, who is who literally throughout the entire game has acted so caring about Ellie with her PTSD and being there for her and not telling her let it go like being like do you want to talk about it do you want to do this like having her care so much up to that point and i've had people argue be like oh well they have a family now and and abby let ellie go she just needs to get over it you don't get over that stuff you don't get over losing like your like parental father figure like you don't just let go of that and the way that dina treated that the way that they wrote that of where Dina just stopped caring, and when she was like, it's either that or me. Well, they like, also posit shit. Dina as, like, the moral compass uh, as contrasted to Ellie, and that, that's, I think that's part of what kind of gets that across to what you are saying. Which, yeah. yeah, I can see that, but the fact that that whole game where she's acted as that moral compass, and now, like, you can, yeah, she's acted like oh, yeah, the moral yeah. compass. Like, she was down it's... for revenge the whole time, but then all yeah, of a sudden, and then this happens, like, oh, I can't do and it. And it's oh like, yeah, just just, actually, just contrasted. And, it, and like and like, of course, I'm not saying this. Like, oh, I'm proud that Ellie went towards violence, but the fact that Ellie came to realize I can't let this go. I have to find my sort of end to this. Yeah, you need of course, to get it's a very like yeah, that's like that. That's like a very intense like example. But it's like I've lived my entire life with my PTSD that I sadly can't exactly get closure with. But to see a character who has that strength to be like oh, I want to find my end to this. I want to find my closure to this. You're the person I love and care about. You will support me, right? And then have Dina just be 100% like, no, it's either this or us. Like, yeah. we've been done for like, a, for like, was it months or like a year? C- couple of years? Was it a couple months or a couple of years? I'm blanking. The span of They've time been at the house. that they were together? No, like where they, like how long that they were at the house after the events of... Oh, you mean Washington. from the theater to the ranch? Um, I want to say like, it like maybe maybe like a year at most. Yeah. Okay, because it's like that whole time they've been there, and now Dina's like, "Oh, I don't support yeah, that baby's you." It's pretty either big, us or so them. It's got to be at least a year, if not more. <laughs> that was a chunky baby. It's just yeah. like it just it made me really angry as someone who has support, who has who has seen that support, who has also seen that not support. For, for them to champion Ellie as this, like... Which I still love Ellie as an example of, of PTSD, which you can argue on me. Um, obviously, no, Senua I'll is never still argue that. the best. She, is, she is a very good representation of what it's like to do PTSD. Um, and just to see that not support... Like, it fucking hurt. Like, well, it's, I was it's, it's, like... Now that you mention just, it, it's even, like... After the fact that she defended her against Tommy, it almost feels like, how did you go from, hey, you don't know what she's been through, seeming understanding like stop mm-hmm. it, Tommy you don't get it and then she's just like oh what now that you'd want to do something opposite I'm not supporting you like not that I thought Ellie was doing the right thing but like I even yeah, had this thing no. in my head of like maybe we saw that cut but then after that Ellie talked to her and they actually would talk about it she said yeah like, I'm not going to kill her but I need to get closure and then maybe they would like understand something mm-hmm. understanding I think it's more so not even about supporting her as much as she just doesn't want Ellie to go so she's willing to do whatever action to try to get her yeah. to avoid which, doing that but then you can you also argue how to deal with this it's gone Sarah no no sorry 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 it's just you can even argue the way that she handled Tommy when Tommy has so much PTSD as well that's true you can even argue the way that she handled Tommy like Tommy, also Tommy lost his fucking eye more or less. Like, yeah, like Tommy <laughs> is wants of course, again, I'm not saying revenge is the best medicine to get your closure on your PTSD here, but it's like Tommy wants that closure and his closure is finding her. His closure is finding her and of course that may not be his closure, but in his head that's what his closure is. Yeah, and the I mean, fact Tommy that Tommy fucking murdered her. Oh, Tommy would hundred percent. I mean, we see throughout the game, Tommy still knows how to legitimately torture people. 
Yeah. Like, that's not a surprise. But it's just, like, the f just the fact how they changed Dina's character on a dime, it just made me really angry. Just having her be the supportive emotional rock and then instantly go to, well, it's either you or us, or it's, like, you're done here, we've been here for an entire year and this hasn't bothered you. We don't fucking know that. I just PTSD doesn't I, just I, bother I would, you for an entire I, year. I would say it was realistic in the sense that most people don't know how to properly act and that she probably genuinely, genuinely thought that was, like, the best course of action, which obviously, you know, in, in retrospect, it's not. Yeah, uh, 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 ultimatums don't work. There's, no. There, there's a reason why you're told don't use ultimatums when people struggling with any kind of issue. No. Because it does it's, not work. And it's, and, like, and it's insulting. Yeah, and it's the whole thing of, again, which, how Abby treated Lev at the, at, at the beginning, you, you see all these examples of characters treating each other as humans, as people, and then you see Dina just pull the whole, like, because again, I've suffered from PTSD for literally 20, like close to 20, I am 24, but literally 24 years of my life, I had childhood trauma PTSD. It's not something you just get over. And knowing how Ellie is trying so hard to find her closure, even though it may not be the best closure, she's trying so difficult to find it and she doesn't have that support anymore. Just it hurt watching it and it made me actually not like Dina. I was loving Dina up to that point. And like, then she just pulled that, and I. In a game. Yeah, and I even love that too. Like how they handled that, mm -hmm. like about how Ellie just had questions, like wanted to know, and Dina's like, "Oh, this is what it is." Like it was, it my was sister brought it down, like true to life fucking experience. Like I mean, as a Jew, like I've just it, so much of being a Jew too is like being delighted in sharing your culture with others, and that was so perfect for Dina's character. Like and. You and I have those different. I mean, obviously, we have the same reasons as to why, as as to what the game handles not well. But again, handle PTSD super, super good, and then have characters that just don't. And it hurt because I don't see PTSD handled in games. Again, last game I fucking saw this in was like Hell Hellblade. Like it literally was only one game b before this that I saw PTSD handled in a way that was generous handled in a way that was true to life like and can then I, not be it just sucked can i bring up something uh that's it's it's tangentially related because i remembered yeah. another thing about the bother um for every moment of like hope within the whole thing else there is i feel like an equal amount of like just like i don't know how to say it other than like flat out emotional manipulation but really blatant like sloppily written emotion. Mm -hmm. um, what what like, the heck is the kid's name? The the uh, the dude that Ellie traveled with for a while. What, oh, Jesse. Jesse. I loved Jesse. Just don't fuck, kill him off in the cutscene. Well, no I'm real like. Talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that like okay, so we play the intro is at the half of it is Abby, and you have mm -hmm. the whole text of like one character Owen's like, oh yeah, so and so is pregnant. And that never comes up. And literally, all I could think of is like, they didn't say that for no reason. I don't know why it's coming up, but it's gonna come back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They they super her, set it up. Well, yeah. And then the, the, the next time you see her, you're playing as Ellie, and I'm sitting there. I literally failed that that QTE because I was like, are you really gonna kill a pregnant? Woman? I think you're like, cutting yeah, out. Yeah, I felt. Oh, I said, um, are you really gonna like make me murder this pregnant woman and then try yeah. to like have the whole Ellie feels bad so you feel bad and all that shit? Yeah, and I'm that just was like, really. Come on, like even if at least if I didn't know the character was pregnant, that would have meant something. That would have been again. This mm -hmm. is why. I... Yeah, because that's knowledge why... that Ellie doesn't have, but you yes. do if you're able to yeah. connect those dots. But it doesn't. But it's not direct. It's not dramatic irony. It's just like know where it's going so you better get ready to feel so bad and it's like, for me it was more is... of it was more of like a hitchcock's uh bomb under the table where you where you as a player know it ellie doesn't and that's what just makes it just like oh fuck dude i know what's going to happen this is going to yeah, suck it, really fucking and you're not bad. the first person who's told me that but then i feel like the addition of things like a qte to further that then cheapens it like like i mean there's a the reason i've told i think i've said this to you seth uh, jose i don't know if i've said this to you uh sarah but like there's a reason why i keep making the the statements the apparently apparently hot take of neil Druckmann thinks he's yoko taro but in reality he's like somewhere between hideo kojima and david it's the fact that he oh that was a weird image i had in my head <laughs> yeah he 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 
saying okay. David Cage often brings awkward images to mind. <laughs> oh yes, it does. R racist images too. But um, <laughs> but like, it, it, the reason I always say this is because of the fact that like a scene like that, I know someone's gonna be like, well, at, well, Blaine, don't you love Nier Automata and Nier Gestalt? Like, don't you adore these games? And these are just as much if not more emotionally manipulating why are you then so hard on this game and i'm like that for very one very important thing reason when perspective switches happen in a yoko taro game they don't feel rushed or sloppy or which i'm sorry like as much as i do love playing as abby i also feel like there just wasn't it, it felt like he was going for that whole thing of like you went through a whole game as one character now go through as another yeah they broke it up into half each instead of mm -hmm. actually having I... to be fully developed uh, playthroughs. Does that make sense? I, th I think it could have absolutely been handled better, but part of me kind of loves that it's just almost like a smash cut where you don't that's really fair. have the time to, uh, yeah. to adapt to it. Oh, no, no, that's fair, like, too. I just feel like it maybe like could have been longer. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, because it's like you hear the arguments of when people finally switched to Abby, they were so pissed. They're like, why the fuck do we have to play her? I loved being able to play as Abby because I'm that sucker for like seeing both sides yeah the first thing and, made me think of was the automata ending a and then b was like oh, yeah wow, we're gonna see a whole other take mm -hmm. on the situation exactly and it's and it's like the way that in my opinion changing to abby um made me and this is gonna sound really terrible but i'm gonna sound like the worst person ever like oh, i didn't feel bad killing owen like i didn't... i already said that i felt bad about i i, I, said I felt I a little bad about still. owen yeah, like, I didn't feel bad about killing Owen. Owen I was, was a dude like, that didn't even want to be there. I'm just like, fuck, this guy probably, d out of anyone in here, he probably doesn't deserve this. I, see, like, I, I mean, I didn't, see, but I didn't I feel bad because I just died. Because I was just like, well, we're chasing after I fucking um, love Tommy. Manny. Tommy. We're chasing which, after Tommy, and we already know which, that can I just friends say, are going to die. So. Even on easy, Tommy has a fucking good shot, and I hate it. <laughs> oh my god. Tommy's a good Because I was playing on, like, easy. And Tommy was hitting me every single fucking time. I was like, "What?" That, that entire sequence was pretty cool. But um, going it back is, to the character, cool. going back to the character swap real quick, it's just so odd to me that people have just like a fundamental um, disagreement with with the with the character swap because yeah, it's um, almost like a visceral reaction. I'm just oh, like, like, like people I don't, were fucking angry, and it and it happened with uh, Metal Gear Solid too, and maybe even like a lesser extent, like so, something like Halo Two. I'm just like, yeah, but the character swap is like the point of the story. Maybe you should, you know, pay attention and see what it what it actually leads to. No, and then exactly. obviously Metal Gear Solid Two. That's like the entirety of the fucking uh, story and the meta story people as well. Are, people are still mad that they had to play as Raiden for that whole fucking like, game. I'm just like that's people... the point. People had a visceral reaction of them humanizing Abby, and that kind of scares the hell out of me. Like, yeah, we get no, it. Humanizing, real. like, it scares the hell out of me because, yes, I will admit, when I first played, because I went in completely blind, I didn't hear any of the spoilers. I did that thing where, like, I Twitter banned words re related to The Last of Us. Like, I did everything. Yeah. Like, I was like, fuck this. I'm not having this spoiled for, for, for me. I'm going in blind. So when it first switched to Abby, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, why the hell do I need to see how this character is? I know, like, I know that she's a jackass. She killed Joel. She did all this. She she literally just killed Jesse? Was that it? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah she killed Jesse they, and you, she I was like, may have killed fuck? Tommy. Yeah, I was like, did. what the fuck is this? But then as it started playing, as I met Lev, as I started to see Abby as a person and not as a villain, no. I started to fall in love with her. Like, I loved Abby. Oh, I was totally I, on her side like, versus Ellie's by the like, time the theater fight rolled around. And, um, like, honestly, even... Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But um, just, like, even from the offset from when Joel got killed, I was like... Ah, Joel did something fuck up. I'm, I'm, I just kind of, like, guessed what the what the twist was. I'm just like, yeah, she, he had this coming. So, I, I'm, like, obviously, yeah, like, yeah, I still wanted uh, Abby to die at that point. But I'm just like, she yeah, probably has a so damn bad. good reason. Yeah, and um, it's like it. I will admit, humanizing her father a tiny bit, and being like he, because it's like it was him who was the, yeah, it was the him. Surgeon. It was he who was the jackass. It it, it 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 wasn't what's her name, the woman from the fire. Uh, Marley. Fireflies. Well, see, she and I was. Felt she was. For him. I was like, he hates having to do this, but he still is. He's like, he's literally but he's like, still going we don't have through any with it. Exactly. Even it's like, that is a good she, emotional conflict. 
even though she was like, is there a way that we can save her? He really cares about, like, she was all for, like, is there a way yeah. that we can save her? Which, if you remember from the first game, Blaine, which, which you said that you played right before this, they were treating her as, like, the villain. No, for when real. When she was the one who was like, is there any way that we can take the take the growth off of her and let her leave with him? She was yeah, like, is there some like, way that we can do this? They, like, retroactively filled in and not, not quite a plot hole, but just because people have said, like, well, why didn't they just take us, like, a, like a, do, like, a, like, a, uh, the thing where they take your spinal fluid or any other thing to, like, yeah. test things further. And T even explains, because he is this, a brain surgeon specializing. Yeah, in this, like, like... There's no other way. We have to take the whole brain. It's the only way. She's otherwise, she's going to be dead or a vegetable. There's no way to yeah. do Yeah, and the way that they treated him like the villain, which, again... It was Abby's dad. Abby, the way that they humanized him, where he took yeah. her to the to the zoo and took her hunting. Fuck those coins, by the way. I found yeah, all I, of them. Honestly, I never, them. I never like, got the vibe that the dad. Um, I'm sorry, Abby's dad was ever like the villain. Like, like, I. He, well, I, like he, way, he made like a hasty decision, that, like trying to, um, and like rushing to the surgery. But um, I say villain, but that's the only word I can really think of because during that scene, it stood out to me how. I keep I'm terrible with names. The uh, Firefly Marlene. woman, Marlene, yeah. the way she kept asking, is there a way that we can save her? Is there a way there must be a way that we can let her leave with him? And this, this surgeon very obviously was more worried about like saving the human race and stuff. But he's like, oh, there's no other way. We have to kill her. And Marlene just kept being like, there has to be some other way. Way. I will say it there has to be a... something that we can do to let her. Leave. I, th I think going point like uh, there's like certain points of like contention when people just like this character wouldn't act like this. I th I think just with like any medium and obviously like some things show their show their um what's the word I'm looking for? They show their stitches a bit more where where the story's being sewn through. Um, th there's just like certain things you're just like it's it's a movie it like it wouldn't work without this coincidence or anything like that so like anything like that I'm I'm usually more than willing to like yeah. just 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 let fly by I'm just like it's it's a fucking movie it's a game and, like yeah, it, there would picking, be no conflict yeah. if this didn't happen exactly. yeah um, but the whole time of how they humanized Abby where it's the and again I. I am dropping praise on this right right now, but it's the first time where a game has has ever legitimately turned me from the side of holy shit, this person has to die, to oh my god, like you've humanized her to the to the point. You can where actually like she's almost justified. I yeah, care it, it I care about Abby. I care about where this game takes her. Yeah. Like it's the first time that a game has ever really done that to me. Like, the visceral reactions that I felt throughout that game from just the stuff that was happening, it was absolutely insane that a game has ever, like, done that to me. A visceral, to this person has to fucking die, to, oh my god, please don't kill this person, like, there has to be a better way f to this. Like, yeah. it was absolutely crazy t to me. Like, At the uh, theater fight, when, I, when you were playing as Abby, and like you're just beating the shit out of, of out of Ellie, I'm just like, yeah, Ellie, you kind of got this coming. Yeah. And like, and, and, and the end cutscene where you're choking out Abby, you're choking out Abby and drowning her, and uh, I, I just felt so conflicted. Just like, like yeah, I feel for you, Ellie, and I'm with you, but just like, like it, it just it just fucked me up for a while. I'm just like, yeah, I, I don't I know mean, what to feel right here. I mean, on the on the topic of Ellie becoming this like you can say like a badass copy of Joel kind of there was one scene that really stood out to me that I personally loved in like this really like intense way where it was when she had that one uh member of Abby's group and she like had her in a headlock and they're like oh don't go down there that's all infected and I think that's the first time the series has like ever showed Ellie using her immunity as like a weapon and I like where she just literally dived back and just dived into the hole with with her yeah. like, with uh, Nora I think yeah to me that was honestly one of the most yeah, badass things wild. I've ever seen Ellie do and I literally lost my shit at, at, at that scene like I was like this is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen at Ellie do like the whole time Joel's like hide your immunity don't let people know move. yeah and it's just like you know what fuck this anyway. and just like throws her back and just lands in the infection as like she's coughing and like running away and like Ellie's just standing there like ready to fucking fight like, I, I thought that was fucking badass. Like, and I will say that ending part where you have to, like, press circle to, like, hit hit her. 
that kind of fucked me up a little bit just from the I way know. that the controller vibe vi- vi- uh, vibrated and i played this whole game wearing headphones i, so, I could like, be wrong but i believe you only had to hit um whatever interact button it was once like i feel like they should have either just let it all be a cutscene yeah, or, oh, or make you do oh, every single like... swing i think they should have <laughs> just had you do it every single swing to just like really really cement it i mean it's still like it th- like that entire like scene where you're hiding from the clickers and like having to take her down and ellie using her infection like blaine blaine what you were saying was exactly true every badass every great representation thing that this game did there was something that made me just go like or what you're pointing out something that made me like either i didn't like what they did with the story or with the game gameplay and again as we talked about earlier i loved this game i loved what this game did i loved how i wanted to love this game so much (laughs) no and it's like honest honestly i think that's what that's part of what makes it really great is when we have conversations like this when you can articulate Mm -hmm. with actual people why you didn't like the game what you did like like trying to think of the best way to describe this when people aren't dumb as shit and yeah. they're like, oh, I just hate this game for something as dumb as, like, making me play as Abby. Or something as, like, oh, this game is perfect, it has no flaws, mm-hmm. it's the best game ever created. Like, when shit like that, like, that's absolutely dumb. And I think that's a controversial thing. I talked to Jose about this when I first beat the game, like, way back in April. I think this game points out who's extremely fucking dumb and who's not. Like, for people it, It's who like play that it. and, like, the fucking... <laughs> what's, what's a middle new Star Wars movie? Uh... The last, last, Jedi. The last, last Jedi. Jedi, yeah, that that just stuff like this just is pretty good at exposing people that you should just fucking ignore. No, literally, because it's like, like my again, to not again, like about the Last Jedi, but the most loud critics are just assholes the most vitriolic. Yeah, and it's there. sort of okay. I'm not saying it's the same way with with the Last was part part two, but the reasons why people hate this game, three fourths of the time, like not counting you, Blaine, like you've totally like valid reasons well but for the people i mean i would i would disagree that it's really not i i would say that that perspective is still skewed by the fact again by the fact like of neil Druckmann's whole yeah. attempt of clouding that so if anything it's <laughs> mm-hmm. more like it's more half and half there's a lot of really really good criticisms of this game but they get drowned mm-hmm. out by the other half of loud ass well, I think that's the thing about criticism. People, like, if, if you turn in a people paper... mad that Abby has muscles. That's yeah. why they hate this game. I like, think... that's like the best compilation of how I could like describe this. Yeah. Just like um, any piece of criticism, like if you turn in a paper, um, like like at a college or a high school, like fucking mid- elementary school, it doesn't matter if the person ag- grading it agrees with you. You have to like substantiate your argument with like evidence and reasoning and opinions, and like just all this bullshit that came out at, at that time. It was just it was all uns- uns- unsubstantiated bullshit. Exactly. And like, just lady with muscle make me angry is not a fucking articulate reason. No, it's and, not. Um, and like I have yeah. this freaking tattooed on my arm, and like it's not necessarily just because I'm like, oh yeah, Team Ellie, fuck Abby. It's it's just like the overall emotion of the game that I went mm-hmm. through. But like I can still recognize, like yeah, this game is fucking flawed. It's not perfect. I really fucking mm-hmm. like it, but there, Did, there's um, lots of critique. I have a last thing to say, but um, this relies on I forget Jose. You have played and beaten Near Gestalt, or you haven't? Uh, no, but I have seen Clump's videos on it extensively. Okay, so you've, I'm, I can't spoil anything for you. Shout out to Clump's. Right. No, you can shout out to Clump's. You, She's a darling. Shout out to Papa to a Papa Clump's for actually getting me into Dragon Dragon Guard and Near. So <laughs> yeah, you, you video, can. Uh, I had to stop because I was like, I'm sorry. This is a quick sidebar. I had to stop his Dragon Guard video because I was just like, I have it on PS2 and I've always meant to beat it. Why? I need to just actually beat it. <laughs> And stop this video and then watch and it. And then later. come back and watch it later. Yeah. Yeah. And I have Dragon Guard 3 on PS3, so. But, so, uh, yeah, if you want to do some spoilers for that. You know, yeah, I will. So, for listeners, like, I'm about to spoil some very late game stuff in Near Gestalt. And I guess Replicant, I just, I don't know if the, It's if the same thing, either way. It's, yeah, it's, there's only, there's minor difference. Um, something, and I get, this could also out me as maybe I'm being a hypocrite. But it, I also feel like it's, it illustrates what I mean when I say the lack of nuance in The Last of Us 2. Nuances that I like that are emotionally. Let's be real. Yokotaro is an incredibly emotionally writer. But he's I think also you're cutting amazing. out a little bit, Blaine. Oh, sorry. 
<clears throat> my hair got in my mouth too. <laughs> um, I think it's fair to say that, like you know, Yoko Taro is—you have to admit—he's an emotionally manipulative writer. Um, it is kind of his bread and butter for a lot of these games, but he's so mm-hmm. fucking good at it that like I can even overlook if any of it seems at all sloppy or lazy. But that being said, my favorite aspects of near gestalt are things that i feel like i just don't see in the last of us 2 which is trying to go for like a hope within the hopelessness and also don't let your own desires cloud the bigger picture because near gestalt Mm -hmm. for those who don't know the end of that game the true end of that game is that your actions as the main character have damned the human race to extinction whatever form it is in and you're gonna live a life with your daughter, but everyone's kind of fucked, and including the the gestalts, which are basically the quote unquote the humanoids that you are and other characters are in this game. Um, without getting into the, all of it, like they're they're basically like imagine you make a clone body that you're gonna go into and transfer your consciousness into. That clone body has a consciousness. So what do you do? That's an ethical dilemma. Um, Aren't the like because the tiny we, little because we would be here forever, and I say that in the best way possible. No, 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 no. I, I, I understand. Um... Aren't the tiny little gestalts you fight at the beginning like actually basically the souls Pits. of children? No, yeah, they're basically that, those aren't gestalts. Those are the shades. Those are humans. The yeah, replicants... so you're basically killing children. Yeah, I haven't replicants seen the videos in a while. My terminology might be off. Yeah, you may have. It, 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 a lot of it, it gets kind of jumbled. But Sarah's right. I'm gonna be here all day. Um, <laughs> so, so you realize these things about what the story is about, but also, you go through this. You see all these different perspectives of every enemy you face for the second half of the game. You find out basically it was totally justified in everything they did. That you were actually the active aggressor, and and you're just pursuing your own goals. You, I know it sounds familiar, right? And you, you get to the end, and you first like beat the boss, and you think everything's okay. Then you play the game with hearing Kaine's perspective, and you realize that all these enemies you're fighting have thoughts and feelings. That these are literally children that you're killing. That these little spirits, like you said, and that is that alone is a is a punch to the gut because it does that perspective thing i really hope in replicant when it comes out we get to play as kaine that would be an amazing change um but what 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 i'm getting at is there's there's the two mm, there's two moments that i think of that really drive home everything about why this game even if it's manipulative it it it, it deserves that because of how it makes you feel one is Emil's sacrifice. I literally, I'm actually tearing up just talking. I literally cannot hear the song Emil's sacrifice mm-hmm. without crying. I start crying like a baby. Um, the youngest member of your group, I mean, technically he's like 2,000 years old, but he is stuck in the he's stuck in the body and mind of a child, not in an ableist way. Literally, he has the perspective of a child. He is like 12 or something, and. And he makes the call knowing that he is able to save you and he can protect himself long enough because of the strength of his body, but he won't survive it. And the last thing you see is him curled up in a ball crying, saying he doesn't want to. And that is something so relatable on just a base human level. I mean, not to say there are people who have gotten over their fear of applaud those people, but mm-hmm. like there are a lot of us too that still have those thoughts and that is an incredibly relatable moment. My my other favorite, this actually might be my favorite moment in the entire game, is when you're fighting Popola and Devola for the second time, giving you the files and they tell you the truth and you have a better exa- idea of what's going on and why they're doing what they're doing. The fact that you don't fight both of them at once, one of them is unreachable and you have to fight Devola. So you, kill, you fight Devola and you kill Devola. Then the game goes to cutscene. And you see Popola have to face the fact that Devola is dying and is going to die. And she can't deal. She talks about how, like, we've always been together. I can't. I literally can't. We're androids and we're ageless. I literally can't imagine a world without you. And yeah. And starts crying. I, mean, I don't know if she actually cries, but she's basically crying. And as she's dying, near the main character, says, Popola, please, let's stop this. And I'm bringing this up, Sarah, because when you said how Dina treats Ellie, when when Popola gets told, let's just stop, and mm-hmm. her instant reaction is, 
you you think we can stop? You mm-hmm. think that there's a stop? You think that we can just go back to the way we were? No, the, her line, no one has ever, no one stops. No one stops. And then it just goes right into the fight and she just instantly, the first thing you have when you can't attack her yet is just the most blood curdling, piercing scream I've ever heard. Like, that is, that is what this kind of story is what I want from a story like that. I want it to make me feel these things, even about enemies that I'm fighting. And I don't mm-hmm. feel like Last of Us in the end actually gets that across. I know it did for apparently a lot of people. For me, it did. It fell far. No, down. and and I completely agree with with you because thinking back on it at the time when I beat it, I I loved the ending because I felt that was the ending that Ellie deserved for everything at the time. Of course, obviously it's changed now as I feel about how Dina treated her and how Ellie's PTSD was treated at at the end. Because mm-hmm. let me just tell you, you don't isolate people with PTSD, which is what the game did. Exactly. They isolated Ellie at the end, which you also don't her, 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 what they're going through. Yeah, like her, 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 she was she was the last of us. LOL. Like you can argue that that was their in, intention. Like oh, her our intention was to make her the last of us. Our intention was to be like oh, she followed Joel's path. This is what happened. This is it's still the consequences. And lazy ass, right? It is. It is. And it's and it's also severely what's the word I want to to use? Uh, it's people yeah, it's with not PTSD. Quite ableist, but it's like yeah, sensitive. You don't you don't isolate them. You don't take everything that they loved away from them. Once people mm. come come to terms with what they're dealing with, which is what Ellie does at that final fight with Abby with that amazing flashback with with her and Joel, that's in my head. Ellie coming to terms with her PTSD and finally it's understanding like Neil just it. Forgot how PTSD works for like the entire. Thing Thank you, that game. because <laughs> I feel real. like kind of going off tangent, but I feel like if this is what Ninja Theory is doing with Hell Hellblade Two, then I think they can pull this off way fucking times better than Neil I still did need to play Hellblade One. I got it downloaded. Please do, but um. But, like, just the way that they handled that with their, like, oh, this is Ellie's punishment. No, you don't do that. You don't exactly. punish someone that's with PTSD by isolating them. See, that's and, again, it took me months to figure to figure this out. When I first beat the game, I thought that was the perfect ending for her. But as the months went on and I started to, re- to, to realize what they were trying to do, it hurt me mentally as someone who... Because when, when I was early playing the game... I was looking up to Ellie at how she handled her uh, PTSD, and how the game handled her PTSD. Excuse me. Yeah, and and then how they just dropped her like that at the end, isolating her and forcing her to now live this life alone. Mm-hmm. Like that fucking hurt. It hurt with me mentally as someone who has been lucky enough to have people by my side when I was first diagnosed with PTSD, like a couple of years back. I had parents who and this is like and this is just my example i i i had parents who when i told them look my therapist thinks this is what this is they immediately were like we all of course i say this as nice as possible we always thought that that something else was what was 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 wrong and we just could never get the answer they were they were accepting they knew and just to see ellie who she thought she had that person and even you can argue that yes, Joel knew he did a terrible thing, but as Ellie grew older, he still knew he wanted to be that father figure, but to give her that space, mm-hmm. give her that space to grow, to grow, grow up. And then you see Dina, who just just drops her, drops her like the end of the game does. It hurt. Did you it hurt mentally? Too that, like when when the shit goes down between Abby and Joel, like kind of the moment he realizes who they went on, he kind of doesn't. Accepts- yeah, he's like, I mean, I deserve this. He basically gives up. I think he knows. Again, again, pointing to Troy Baker and his amazing acting during during that yeah. scene because you could tell just by looking at his face, like I'll he, real- he I understood. May, <laughs> I, may, I may think that Troy Baker is a is a loud ass in that, but I an asshole so judge. Um, at the same time, like I will never ever deny the fact that man is a master of his craft, both voice work mm-hmm. and acting in general. Um, motion capture. The man is a the man is a legend of the industry for a reason. 
he just has per and again i i know like the game awards are coming up in a couple of mods people are like oh who are they gonna who's gonna nominate for best actor fuck me if troy baker isn't even like one of the people who is even on the short list of winning i'm gonna be severely disappointed i mean he fucking deserves like people give him shit for being basically like the second coming of uh nolan north in terms of just like they're literally everywhere like you like it's yeah. it's, who's it? it's it's nolan troy and fucking yuri lowenthal it's like you can't escape them no matter where you go well, see, but when they do Lowenthal's good like work they do good work because he got bit parts for years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also the way i argue i argue with the beginning of the game when you see in in joel's face that he knows that he's going that he's that he deserves this and that this is finally what he's been waiting for mm -hmm. which again same same podcast where they talked about that scene Troy literally confirmed that he said D Joel knew that this was coming he just didn't know when so he was yeah. so he was ready for it to the the museum scene in the middle of the game which is probably one of my favorite scenes in oh, gaming yeah. in recent memory same. I, I loved, loved that, that scene track. it was beautiful it was just like it was I just I love that scene a lot, and just that scene kind of makes me tear tear up because of Ellie. That they make you think there's going to be combat, and then there isn't. Yes, just there a was big, quiet walkthrough. That was so good. Um, and then at, at at the end, during Ellie's PTSD flash flashback of when she's talking to Joel on on his front on his front porch, I think that again for every shit thing that this game does, it is, and this is going to sound extremely cheesy, but bear with me here. It is my argument that games are taking the best from cinematic movie experiences. And I think there are people, there are developers in this industry, actors in this industry, writers in this industry, who know what to take from cinematic film and put it in, mm -hmm. in, into game in a point where we, I think we are starting to blur that line and just a couple scenes in The Last of Us Part 2 and stuff like Death, Death, Death Stranding, which playing, I know you can argue me about this, which I totally am here for. I need to oh, play yeah. it, and then eventually but I will argue with you again. That's but. fine. That's why I. That's why I love having these arguments with you. Yeah. I think. But it's uh, like, I just think the Last of Us, what it does right in its acting and its direction, is so beautiful that, to me, I'm starting to get tired of the argument that games can't be cinema cinematic because fuck you, they already are. <laughs> I think you can I'm, play it it's a, it's a, instead of cinematic stuff. That fucking oh my god, oh my god, the ledge scene where Abby and Lev are crossing to get to the skies. Oh, the bridge. Skies. Oh yes, and she keeps oh having my the god. yeah. That scene fucking it gave me fucking anxiety. Like I already don't fact, like heights, so I'm just like subtle, oh god. The subtle design element where if you when you play as Abby and you look over a large drop you actually start getting that like that yeah go feeling they specifically coded it in that is brilliant and it's just like it's that scene with how lev handled it so casually and he was like yeah. oh what are you having trouble with and abby's like please stop <laughs> like, and those are things i loved about like, lev like lev the character yeah. is great his, I love Lev his, too. His plot he was... structure and everything around him. I have issues with him as a person. I adore. He was and crazy. also the way that he spoke about Owen, and he's like, "So is there Ugh. something happening?" I was like, "There's nothing happening." And Lev Abby's was like, like "Really totally now?" Something happening. Like it was just, just I, I don't, I don't know. Like with how much shit things you can say about The Last of Us, just some of the choices that were made are going to stick out for me in gaming for a very long time they absolutely I th will. I, I think i just it's... put a bone on just because we're getting close to the three hour mark i was about to say i yeah. have a i have a closer do you think this year at the game awards jeff keely is finally going you know what i'm not going to make that joke <laughs> no no i no, I, 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 I i need to make hear the it. joke no it involves implying fellatio and i don't think i should do that because i oh, actually kind of like implied fellatio is the best i like point. jeff keely too <laughs> He really likes Hideo Kojima, is all I'm saying, and he's good friends with him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, if, I don't know why he'd be listening, but Jeff, if you somehow hear this, I'm sorry. It was a bad joke that got halfway out of my mouth. And for what it's worth, Blaine is a guest. Put, put it on her. Yes, exactly. I, I can be, I can be uh, excommunicated in this. Blaine, think, yeah. you are never being excommunicated from from this. I think, I think, I think the 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 moral of the story is that the real Last of Us are the friends who away. I hate you. Exactly. You're just Perfect. mad because Thank I said you. it before you did. 
All right. No, so, so, the real but, the real or, thing that we should be angry about is that the Last of Us Two wasn't called the Last of Us Two <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. Oh my god. Jose, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say poor Blaine is over on uh, East Coast time, so it's uh twelve thirty AM for you. It's only nine for me and Sarah. Bold so. of you to imply I sleep a good schedule. <laughs> Um, no, no, yeah, we should probably See, cut it here anyway, because we've been right. talking for, like, this is the third hour now, right? I, I feel like I was silent for, like, decent portions, but I feel like that's just because the two of you had a better perspective, and I I, don't, I just had a good time listening in on what you guys had <laughs> to say about it. just had a good it. time. <laughs> well, well you I know, appreciate you be giving me this platform. Yeah, of course. I'll be real. I, I've been wanting to talk about this to at least some kind of audience for a while, and I, yeah. I do eventually want to make a. I do want to make a video essay about it. I just I need to actually think about it more, and it's it's gonna focus on like, it's gonna focus on near and The Last of Us and Spec Ops: The Line, as well as. Uh, Oh, there's something else I was going to bring up, but like it, it's going to go through just in general, like the strength and weakness of different emotional manipulative narratives and what makes them right. Or maybe Undertale. Well, and I'm helping again, Sarah with the video, so if you need help, I'm more than happy to. And again, yeah, like I said earlier, I think when you can get people in a room like this to be able to talk about The Last of Us in a critical and a academic yeah. way, I think you can have an amazing conversation because I think that game, the way that that game is built like of course it's hard to put aside all the neo Druck Druckmann stuff but the way that the game is built designed done the way they was so polarizing and how people liked it or not again if you can have a discussion like we just did it could be Absolutely. incredibly interesting and incredibly eye eye opening in the best way possible and um, i think it's sad that there's not many conversations like this about this title also, Something. I just want to shout out um, Nexus Requiem because um, she on our last podcast is the one that was um, in the chat kind of like highlighting this. And that's kind of what got the mm -hmm. ball rolling on this whole thing. So uh, this wouldn't have been possible without Nexus. So thank you. Thank you, Nexus. Anyway, uh, you were going to say something, Blaine? Yeah. Um, damn. ADHD brain. I may have lost it. One Beavers second. like dams. That's true. Um conversation uh, I like using uh, meat related products as my passwords I I tried making one but I couldn't use it because it wasn't strong enough okay that's good um yeah I, I can't <laughs> say but this has been a good convo um again I'm glad I had this platform um I, oh, oh I, I remember what um, you know, I, I, a lot of people have said it, but I know one person I follow does say that from Sterling is that we don't criticize things because to hate them, we criticize them mm -hmm. because we want to see them do. And I don't, while I do genuinely, I, I kind of hate The Last of Us too. I don't say these things because I want to tell people like, as much as I, am, as much as if someone asked me should I play it, I would probably say no. I don't want to tell people what they should and shouldn't. Assume. I just really want to be like, just just don't pretend these issues don't exist. Mm -hmm. don't, don't ignore these issues because I've been seeing that happen way too much, especially with this game. I feel like um, I'm tired of. It. I feel like even tangentially related when we were talking about um, Gaunt's a uh, manga slash anime. Mm -hmm. It's whenever you and I recommend it to people, it comes with a big uh, caveat, just like, no, hey, just just keep in mind, there's some shit in here that's 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 not good. Yeah, like, and. <sighs> And, and again, it's that tweet I saw earlier, which I think needs to be re reiterated so people know, you can still love stuff that you criticize. Mm -hmm. you, you can still be like me. Like, again, I pretty much spent this whole thing like saying how much I love this game, but I still criticize it for the stuff that's not... I was going to say kosher, but that doesn't make any sense. For the stuff that's not like... I'll allow it. If I co-sign on it, would it be kosher? Shut up. For the, like, I will 100% criticize it for the way that it handles mental health representation, for the way that it handles LGBTQ re re representation. It's, but at the same time, I will also praise it for the way that it handles its, it, some of its characters, for the way that the acting is. I think the moral thing is that you can still love stuff. Don't be ashamed to say that you like something. But don't also forget 
like you can still criticize that thing too because i because i think that's something that's going around a lot is that people seem to forget that you can like something and criticize it at the same time exactly and i think that's a big thing too is that we're, we're gonna criticize the shit out of out of this but there's still stuff in it that we appreciated there was still stuff in it that was very good but we're still gonna criticize it all right i think because, that's oh sorry good. sorry because nothing can get fixed unless the problems are brought to light Exactly. All right. Any last words? Silent Hill 4 is a near perfect game. Okay, that's Sarah. a lie, but it's really good. Uh, <laughs> uh, please don't forget that Jake Wesker I- I- exists. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Albert Wesker fucks. Yes, Wesker Albert does Wesker fuck. does fuck. He fucked several times, in fact. Uh, p- play Metal I mean, Gear apparently... Rising. Don't oh, trust, oh, don't trust Joe... Bronson. So, uh, just, <laughs> don't trust Bronson. Jose, just, innocent. just, just because of you, I literally went on Amazon and I ordered an Xbox 360 copy of Metal Gear Rising for like oh, $13. Nice. Nice. Good. So I could play it on my Xbox One X. Right, I'm I think... going to probably so, do that you. too. Oh. It right. was only $13. Pick it up now. All right, I think that's about it. So we will see everybody next time and we will actually cover the news next time. (laughs) All right. Adios. Bye, guys.